Members, the Right Honourable the Lord Mayor. City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday the 11th of May 2021. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the Council, including transferring outside Australia. Acknowledgement of Country. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respects to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land and acknowledge that they are of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. Acknowledgement of Colonel William Light. The Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the City of Adelaide. Direct and prosper its deliberations to enhance much public glory and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. Will all present stand in silence in memory of those who gave their lives in defence of their country at sea, on land, and in the air? Thank you, members. Please be seated. Members, item number four on the agenda tonight, oh, I'm sorry, item number five, we have no apologies or leave of absence, goes to item number six, which is the confirmation of minutes from the 13th of April 2021, the 20th of April 2021 and the 27th of April 2021. Could I have someone move that the minutes be accepted, please? Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Members, any comments? If not, we'll go to the vote. Those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Uh, members, we have one deputation granted at the time of the agenda publication, which is from Kelly Henderson, to talk to us about Colonel William Light ceremony and the civic collection items. Uh, Ms Henderson, if you'd like to come forward, you have five minutes to speak. Good evening. I'm speaking to you tonight because I believe this matter requires an urgent motion, a motion of the Council uh, to amend the Council's standing orders, which the current date of which is June 2019. That is insofar as it relates to the need to specify uh, the um, securing and the conservation of key traditions of the City of Adelaide. Um, in particular, to avert what I believed was a travesty of disrespect and contempt, which occurred on the 28th of April in the Queen Adelaide Room, and, and the um, failure by this council to hold a special council meeting honouring William Light on the 27th of April, his actual birthday. 
This deputation seeks reinstatement and respect for fundamental principles and essential elements of the light commemoration ceremony, a tradition of the City of Adelaide which originated 162 years ago for two purposes. Firstly, to honour South Australia's first Surveyor General, Lieutenant Ken Colonel William Light, who was also the planner, founder and surveyor of the city, port and district of Adelaide. And secondly, in honour of other founders of South Australia whom sought to initiate this commemoration of light 20 years after his death on the 6th of October 1839, Colonel George Palmer, Rakes Curry, Alexander Elder and Jacob Montefiore. They originated this tradition with their gift of a sterling silver George III punch bowl made by William Grundy of London in 1766, known as the Colonel Light Bowl. It was presented as an engraved, this is engraved on it, presented to the Mayor and Corporation of Adelaide that they may thereout drink in Australian wine to the memory of Lieutenant Colonel Light, the first Surveyor General of South Australia. And I digress. As Palmer also gifted the corporation a piece of the Queen's cake, um, it eventuated that we toast light in Australian port wine, accompanied by a slice of South Australian white iced fruit cake. By definition, this gift of the punch bowl includes the citizens' participation in the toast honouring light, as the municipal corporation of the City of Adelaide was constituted to incorporate the mayor, aldermen, councillors, and citizens of Adelaide. That is the act in force at the time, number 11 of 1849. By defin it does not, definition, it does not include administration, employees, nor others who are citizens of other council areas. The fundamental principles and elements are, one, that the mayors, and subsequently Lord Mayors, elected members and citizens of the city together drink a toast to the memory of Lieutenant Colonel William Light, first Surveyor General of South Australia. Secondly, that the toast be drunk with Australian wine, served from the punch bowl, gifted and dedicated for that purpose. And subsequently, as time-honoured practice has, has um, refined it or augmented it, the traditional toast honouring light and the donors of the Colonel Light Bowl is held annually on Light's actual birthday anniversary or the nearest business weekday. And not only is the toast conducted by the Lord Mayor and the citizens, and, and the Dep Deputy Mayor, of course, um, um, but not two or three councillors who were so kind as to turn up and are honoured by their presence here tonight, um, but is honoured by every elected member of council, including those here tonight who couldn't be bothered, who couldn't be bothered to honour the dedication of this bowl for this purpose and that specifically named and included them in uh, partaking from the wine for that purpose from this bowl, honoured by every elected member. To ensure and secure this, it was originally and traditionally conducted via a formal council meeting, the first meeting of every new council, which was following the annual election. Um, whether with or without any ancillary civic event or celebration, which is irrelevant to the dedication and irrelevant to the purpose of the gift of the bowl. Subsequently, in addition to traditional formalities, it has become the practice to have an additional speech by a non-elected person on the subject of light. On the occasion on, in, in the Queen Adelaide room, uh, there was grave abuse of light. He was not. Uh, he did not die on the 5th of October, as the Lord Mayor stated. He was accused of having a girl in every port during the Spanish War of Independence, which is false. He was then accused of not having mar married Mar Mariah Gandhi, as he's apparently expected to be a bigamist. Thank you. He uh, could not remarry. Your, your time is up. As if he's already like married. Wrap up. Um, well. In, wrap, in, in winding up, I'll say I'm speaking as a lecturer of this council and as an internationally recognised primary source researcher, expert and author on the subject of William Light and the genius and potential world heritage value of his, his plan. And I beg you to reinstate the tradition and require the dedicated purpose of the Colonel Light Bowl 
to be respected and honoured each and every year by all elected members. Thank you, Ms Henderson. Thank you. Uh, members, that takes us to 8.1 on the agenda tonight. Um, I need someone to move that the petition be received. Thank you, Councillor Martin and the seconder, Deputy Lord Mayor. Members, to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Uh, members, I'm going to uh, read out uh, items nine and 10 for on block, uh, with the exception of 10.11, because I have an amend a small amendment to that. If members could uh, please raise a hand if you would like me to pull out any of these reports. Um, so, members, 9.1, 9.2, 9.3, 9.4, Thank you. Members, 10.1, uh, 10.2, 10.3, 10.4, 10.5, 10.6, 10.7, 10.8, 10.9, 10.10, 10.11, 10.12, 10.13, 10.14, 10.15, 10.16, 10.17, 10.18, 10.19, 10.20, 10.21, 10.22, 10.23, 10.24, 10.25, 10.26, 10.27, 10.28, 10.29, 10.30, 10.31, 10.32, 10.33, 10.34, 10.35, 10.36, 10.37, 10.38, 10.39, 10.40, 10.41, 10.42, 10.43, 10.44, 10.45, 10.46, 10.47, 10.48, 10.49, 10.50, 10.51, 10.52, 10.53, 10.54, 10.55, 10.56, 10.57, 10.58, 10.59, 10.60, 10.61, 10.62, 10.63, 10.64, 10.65, 10.66, 10.67, 10.68, 10.69, 10.70, 10.71, 10.72, 10.73, 10.74, 10.75, 10.76, 10.77, 10.78, 10.79, 10.80, 10.81, 10.82, 10.83, 10.84, 10.85, 10.86, 10.87, 10.88, 10.89, 10.90, 10.91, 10.92, 10.93, 10.94, 10.95, 10.96, 10.97, 10.98, 10.99, 10.10, 10.11, 10.12, 10.13, 10.14, 10.15, 10.16, 10.17, 10.18, 10.19, 10.20, 10.21, 10.22, 10.23, 10.24, 10.25, 10.26, 10.27, 10.28, 10.29, 10.30, 10.31, 10.32, 10.33, 10.34, 10.35, 10.36, 10.37, 10.38, 10.39, 10.40, 10.41, 10.42, 10.43, 10.44, 10.45, 10.46, 10.47, 10.48, 10.49, 10.50, 10.51, 10.52, 10.53, 10.54, 10.55, 10.56, 10.57, 10.58, 10.59, 10.60, 10.61, 10.62, 10.63, 10.64, 10.65, 10.66, 10.67, 10.68, 10.69, 10.70, 10.71, 10.72, 10.73, 10.74, 10.75, 10.76, 10.77, 10.78, 10.79, 10.80, 10.81, 10.82, 10.83, 10.84, 10.85, 10.86, 10.87, 10.88, 10.89, 10.90, 10.91, 10.92, 10.93, 10.94, 10.95, 10.96, 10.97, 10.98, 10.99, 10.100, 10.101, 10.102, 10.103, 10.104, 10.105, 10.106, 10.107, 10.108, 10.109, 10.110, 10.111, 10.112, 10.113, 10.114, 10.115, 10.116, 10.117, 10.118, 10.119, 10.120, 10.121, 10.122, 10.123, 10.124, 10.125, 10.126, 10.127, 10.128, 10.129, 10.130, 10.131, 10.132, 10.133, 10.134, 10.135, 10.136, 10.137, 10.138, 10.139, 10.140, 10.151, 10.152, 10.153, 10.154, 10.155, 10.156, 10.157, 10.158, 10.159, 10.160, 10.171, 10.172, 10.173, 10.174, 10.175, 10.176, 10.177, 10.178, 10.179, 10.180, 10.181, 10.182, 10.183, 10.184, 10.185, 10.186, 10.187, 10.188, 10.189, 10.190, 10.191, 10.192, 10.193, 10.194, 10.195, 10.196, 10.197, 10.198, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.
uh, neglect of our uh, our uh, strategic plan uh, that which requires us to stimulate a thriving community. Um, so I, I repeat, I'm grateful that uh, we have found a location. I am disappointed and uh, I do wish that we could find some uh, similar activities like these for city workers um, who one sees every day, lunchtime, after work, um, participating in what is after all an open air activity available to all. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Members? If not, I'll go to the mover to sum up. Councillor Hyde? Yeah, just in summing up, Lord Mayor, I'd like to um, thank uh, the Beach Volleyball SA um, uh, for working with our administration so constructively. Um, uh, obviously, they would have preferred to stay um, in a prime city location in a block that is meant to be marked for a building per Colonel Light's vision, um, not open recreational space. Um, uh, but all good things must come to an end. I think this site has a lot of potential to offer a new home to Beach Volleyball. It's actually got a lot, lot more space there. Um, it is actually more accessible uh, to the broader community. Uh, it's close to public transport. Um, you're able to go and park a car there easily without having to pay 20 bucks in a council U park or on street car parking. Um, and I think that's what um, uh, our, our partner in this in this venture is actually really excited about talking to the CEO and what have you. It's it's an opportunity um, for them to access another market that they that they don't currently have. Um, uh, so I, I don't think we should lose sight of uh, of, of this uh, important important position um, of how it will be used um, by the community at large. And I reject totally the notion that it's not a city location. It is within the city of Adelaide. Um, I would not call it suburban by any stretch of the imagination. Um, furthermore, we know that you know, in, in coming years there will be substantial development with many, many, uh, likely many, many hundreds of residents, if not thousands, um, uh, going into medium density residential just on the other side of Port Road. Um, and what a fantastic opportunity it would be for them to have excellent access uh, to what will become a real gem in the parklands. And that's what actually attracted them to this site. Um, of course, they had a pick of the bunch, as we learned at Apple. Um, there were lots of sites that they went through. Um, uh, this was the one that they wanted the most, and that's why I commend it to the Chamber, and I hope you will vote for it. Thank you, members. I will go to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Um, the next item on the agenda is 10.3. Lord Mayor, I would like to declare uh, an actual conflict of interest as I am a uh, council assessment panel member. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, so 10.3 members, I'll look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Moran. And a seconder, uh, Councillor Martin. Councillor Moran, do you wish to speak? No, no. Councillor Martin? No. Uh, members? Oh, for the, so thank you. Uh, I'll come back to the moment to sum up. Thank you, members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Thank you, that is carried. My apologies, I was just trying to work out why that had been called. Well, that was around the, the conflict. Um, members, we have 10.4, which is the Illuminate Adelaide Public Artwork. And I'll look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Mackey. I'll look for a seconder. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Mackey, did you wish to speak? No. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, members, Councillor Martin. Um, yes, Lord Mayor. Look, um, uh, as you know, um, um, I support um, most public art in the city. Um, I think uh, public art is an important part of uh, city life and the amenity of the city of Adelaide. Um, however, um, I, I do want to reiterate, as I did at the committee, this is a large sum of money. Uh, and uh, I think we need to be mindful that, given our financial circumstances, to be allocating as much as we allocate uh, to the Adelaide Festival for um, an installation, albeit one which will go for many years in its location, uh, and then to allocate a similar amount in a subsequent year is a very substantial contribution. Um, and I trust the government isn't expecting us to do it a third time. Um, it is, um, or will be by then, if it is to be in equal measure, 
uh, in excess of uh, 900 um, or a, a million dollars, which is a large contribution and probably greater than the, uh, the, the entire quantity of public art, the value of public art in the city of Adelaide in the last three or four years. So um, while I support this, um, I, I think we do need to bear in mind it's a very substantial commitment we're making. Members, if not, I'll go to the back to Councillor Mackey to sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, members, that takes us to 10.7, which is the review of your say Adelaide. And I look for a mover from the floor. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor and the seconder. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to it? Uh, Councillor Abraham today. Uh, members from the floor, any debate, discussion? If not, I'll go back to Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Council members, the division has been called. All those in favour of the motion, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Mackey, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Kerr, Councillor Ho, Councillor Canole, Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Abraham today. Members, that takes us to uh, item 10.9 on the agenda, which is the 2020-2021 quarter three financial report. And I look for a move from the floor. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. And a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Uh, Councillor Hyde, did you wish to speak? Okay. Uh, Councillor Knoll. Uh, members. Councillor Martin. Yeah, look, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, and uh, I look forward to, uh, to my colleagues uh, speaking to this as they inevitably will. Um, it is a good thing that there has been an improvement in our financial performance um, due in main to uh, revenue, revenue recovery in our businesses and to uh, the administration uh, restructuring in a manner that was cheaper than expected. Um, uh, we should be grateful for that. Um, but I, uh, I would suggest to you that we need to be mindful of our failures as well. Um, budget improvements are often uh, delivered through positive actions, but uh, this one has been delivered through a series of failures as well. Uh, failure to deliver an east-west bikeway, wiping uh, $3 million of grant funding from the state government, $3 million they gave us um, from our books, uh, and also wiping three million from our borrowings. Um, it has left the city without a vital means of transport for those who cycle. Um, and I think we've let down our community in that respect. So they would see it, in fact, they have said they have seen it in some quarters as a, uh, a failure of leadership. There's also been a failure to complete infrastructure projects. Um, we went out to the community with, with this budget, this current budget uh, last year, and we said, uh, with a huge list, we're going to spend $68 million on uh, this project and that, uh, but we're on target to deliver a bit more than 10% less than that. So we've been slowing things down. Uh, we've been moving them into next year because of our, our debt problems. Uh, the, the council's also adopted, as part of this budget, a, um, a program to reduce staff, to skinny down our staff, uh, and that measure, which cost $9 million, has delivered savings in 2021 of $5 million. So we spent $9 million to save $5 million in 2021. Now, I know there are those who will say, oh yes, but uh, those savings will come back to us next year as well. Well, it's not too far down the track and our wages bill is exactly what it was. Um, we promised at the very start of this council also um, to deliver master plans for Hutt Street, O'Connell Street and Melbourne Street. But uh, instead we've just frittered that money away, Lord Mayor, on um, temporary lighting in, uh, in some streets and uh, lots of singing and dancing and other things to uh, brighten people's moods. 
But this is at a time when O'Connell Street, especially, which wants to have been the subject of one of these master plans, is to have a massive new development at 88. And the master plan was actually about improving the public realm at the same time, so that this city, this city had a major development accompanied by an uplift in public realm. Thank you. Uh, I, will um, finish up, I will oh. finish up now, uh, Lord Mayor. I, I do want to conclude by saying I accept that the finance staff have done a, a great job reporting on our fan, financial position, but uh, I will not be supporting this because I don't support the financial direction that the council is directing that we take. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Members, Councillor Hart. Um, where to begin, I suppose, maybe chronologically. Um, the, the bikeway has never appeared in our operating, it was never in our operating position. As Councillor Martin was alluding to it, to it being in there. So actually removing it does help borrowers as... No, I didn't say that. No, 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 you didn't allude to it and I didn't interrupt you when you got things wrong, so I asked for the same courtesy. Um, uh, so, Lord Mayor, it, it did appear in borrowings, and the borrowings have improved because of that. Um, uh, and I think that's a good thing. But it, to, to talk about infrastructure that we're unable to deliver, and that is absolutely a point, I'll come to that in a moment. To talk about infrastructure that we're una unable to deliver, and then to lament um, uh, the, the passing of the bikeway as it has, even though the bikeway came through to us with a very, very clear credential report that it is a high risk project. We were unlikely to deliver it within the time frame. We were unlikely to deliver it within the budget. And of course, the whole reason we get the money from the state government was because of the time frame, um, uh, which then puts the whole the project the project just was not in any state to progress, which is uh, which is unfortunate after so long. Um, uh, nevertheless, our portion of it would have been funded through borrowing, so I think we were right to not proceed with that um, at the moment. Uh, but if I can just, I'll touch on the master planning as well, and of course, um, we do have a big development going ahead there, but at the same time, those councillors who um, are upset, and I'm a councillor that's upset that the master planning process hasn't gone ahead very quickly, but to go around and talk to businesses and say, oh, look, we need a public role upgrade here, we need it right away because we've got this big development coming. When you're the same person that's voted against the big development, which actually delivers rates in perpetuity to the city, which assists us in paying for a public realm upgrade, I also think is rather disingenuous as well. Um, and uh, uh, furthermore, furthermore, when we want to talk about financial direction of the council, well, I have to draw the councillor's attention um, and all councillors' attention to the answers to the questions on notice at the last meeting of council, which the modelling showed us in no uncertain terms that if we had supported various measures, uh, such as uh, canning the Central Market Arcade redevelopment, such as not proceeding with the $20 million in operational savings that I moved and this council supported, um, uh, such as carving up 88 O'Connell and selling it smaller blocks of land and also the great rate give back, including to empty blocks of land and wealthy developers and what have you, the council would have been in administration within two years. On Councillor Martin's own motions, this council would have in 10 years time been in half a billion dollars worth of debt. It's, it's absolute insanity. So look, if Councillor Martin's unhappy with the direction this council is going, when we've reduced our debt, our, our projected borrowings as of June 30, from 99 million to 61 million, which I think is fantastic. And when this council is, and I'll just finish off, when this council has also reduced its deficit from 41 million to 18 million, if Councillor Martin isn't happy with that, then I don't know what will make him happy, Lord Mayor. Members, if not, I'll go back to the move to sum up. Summed up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, members, 10.11. Um, um, I've already moved on, actually. Um, 10.11 um, was uh, just there's a slight correction. So it is a nomination of up to two council members uh, to the Environment Protection Authority Board. Uh, so the first I need uh, to move is the procedural. If I could have someone move, thank you. And a second, uh, sorry, move for Councillor Knoll, second of Councillor Mackey. Uh, did you wish to speak? If not, members to the vote, those in favour, those against. 
and then I will go to the nominations. Uh, so we have up to two nominations of council members or staff members. I nominate Alman Abraham today. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Do you accept the nomination? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Mackey. Uh, I nominate Councillor Donovan. Councillor Donovan, do you accept the nomination? Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Are there any other further nominations? Uh, I nominate uh, Councillor Hyde. Councillor Hyde, do you accept the nomination? Uh, yes. Oh, sorry. Uh, yes. Thank you. Yes. Councillor Hyde. Are there any further nominations? If not, uh, that means that we will go to a ballot and the papers are on your desk. So members, I need you to put a cross on two members. Thank you, two members, up to two. You can just do one if you want, but you can do two. So members, just to remind you, it's Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Donovan and Councillor Hyde. Members, the successful councillors are Councillor Abraham today and Councillor Hyde. Um, given that there's material conflict of interest, I need you both to leave the room for the vote. Um, members, I'll need someone to move a motion. Is that thank you, Councillor Moran, and a seconder. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak? No, members, to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Members, that takes us to 10.12. Yep. 10.12, uh, which is cultural allegations, and I look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Mackey, and a seconder. Uh, Councillor Moran, 
Uh, Councillor Mackey, did you wish to speak? Um, <clears throat> thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, yes, look, in moving it, I would, would also like to propose uh, a variation to the motion uh, that we note the report and that uh, uh, henceforth an annual update be provided to the council chamber. Do I have a seconder? You've already got a seconder. I just need Councillor Moran. I'm happy with that. Thank you. And by leave of the meeting, by a show of hands, we're happy with that. Thank you. Councillor Mackey, did you wish to speak to it? Uh, Thank you. Councillor Moran? Uh, Members? If not, I'll go back to the move to sum up. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Just, just very, very briefly, I appreciate the effort that the administration went to uh, comparing different systems that were not compatible to bring it forward. But that work's now being done, and I look forward to a continuing a continuing report card uh, on uh, uh, this matter uh, for two future councils. Thank you. Members, to the vote. Those in favour. Those against. That is carried. Um, that takes us to, uh, so we did the procedural on 10.14, which is the South Australian Public Health Council nominations. Um, so we've done the procedural and now what I'm looking for is up to two council members to be nominated. And I look to the floor for nominations, Councillor Hyde. I nominate Councillor Martin and Councillor Kouros. Councillor Martin. No. Councillor, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. No, uh, Councillor Mackey. Uh, I nominate uh, Councillor Donovan. Councillor Donovan, do you accept the nomination? Thank you. Councillor Kerrick? Oh, Thank you. Councillor Donovan, are there, are there any further nominations? If not, Councillor Donovan, um, I, will, uh, I will ask you to leave the chamber. Are you? Oh, I'm going to nominate Councillor Abraham today. Councillor Abraham today, do you accept the nomination? Sure. Okay, are there any further nominations? If not, I'll ask Councillor Donovan and Councillor Imbrida Abraham today to leave the room. <laughs> Members, I need someone to move uh, that we accept the nominations of Councillor Donovan and Councillor Abraham today. Thank you, Councillor Mackey, second to Councillor Knoll. Any discussion? If not, Councillor Mackey to sum up. To the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried, thank you. Members, we have four items tonight to be considered in confidence. These items require a motion and decision to order exclusion of public to enable consideration in confidence. I need a mover and a seconder uh, for 12.1.1, which is the audit committee report in confidence. Thank you, Councillor Mackey. Seconder, Councillor Abraham today. Uh, does anyone wish to speak? If not, to the vote. Sorry, Councillor Martin. Uh, just a question, Lord Mayor. Uh, I, I still can't understand why it's in confidence. Uh, the report to Council says the matter is confidential and we can't disclose any detail. What, why then are we choosing to suppress a document that says we can't tell you anything because it's confidential? I will uh, ask the CEO. Uh, through the presiding member, um, this is a report um, that was presented in confidence by a workshop uh, to our audit committee. There is content within there, um, as explained in the confidentiality, um, confidentiality order, that the report could reasonably impact employees of a council. Um, and so at this stage, we would still like to keep this in confidence until um, we have uh, determined a way forward, um, which we obviously have the advice from audit committee and next steps will be bring this through to um, the committee and then through to council for decision. Um, so, uh, I thank you, Lord Mayor, uh, for that answer. But uh, again, uh, there is no 
report here. It is simply a document that says um, we had a workshop on the subject. Um, and the uh, confidential agenda is linked, um, Councillor Martin. Um, so if you're not happy for it to go in confidence, I would suggest you vote against it. Okay. And may I also, at this point in time, uh, since it's the best point, ask um, for the matter to come to council at some stage in a workshop? Uh, I think the CEO just said that. Okay. She just said it would be coming through committee into council. Um, members, uh, to the vote, those in favour, those against, thank you, that is carried. Um, I also need a move and a seconder for a motion to exclude for 12.2.1, which is physical security contract extension. Thank you, Councillor Kerra. Seconded by Councillor Hyde. Um, did, does anyone wish to speak to the motion? If not, if ask the move to sum up. Move it to uh, members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, I have. 12.2.2, which is the City Connected Deed of Agreement. I need a mover and a seconder for motion to exclude. Thank you, Councillor Canal. Second to Councillor Kerra. Does anybody wish to speak? If not, to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. And a mover and a seconder for motion to exclude for the item 12.2.3, which is the 2020-2021 quarter three confidential commercial operations report. Well, from me, thank you, Councillor Hyde. And a seconder, Councillor Knoll. Would anybody like to speak? If not, we'll go to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Um, members of the public and staff, thank you for your attendance for the first part of the meeting. Uh, those not associated with items 12.1.1, 12.2.1, 12.2.2 12 and 12.2.3, I now ask you to leave the chamber. The streaming will cease while council... And um, if we we'll ask Eddie to open the doors. <laughs> oh, thank you, Councillor. Members, item 13 is uh, the Lord Mayor's report. So this month we've continued to advocate for our city and uh, play our role as cap uh, Capital City Council to shape national agendas. I hosted, sorry, I, mean, sorry, I hosted the Council of Capital City um, Lord Mayors in Adelaide last week. Over three days, the visit was attended by Lord Mayors Sally Cap of Melbourne, Adrian Schrinner of Brisbane, Anna Reynolds of Hobart, as well as the ACT Chief Minister Andrew Barr and City of Sydney Chief Executive Monica Baroni, along with other senior local government figures. Uh, we went on a visit to the Central Market where they were given an opportunity to uh, have a look at an overview of our upcoming $400 million redevelopment of the Central Market Arcade Market Square. We also toured Lot 14 and the Space Discovery Centre and it was fantastic to be given the presentation by Di Dixon of Lot 14 of the plans for the growth uh, of this innovation sector. Uh, later this month, I'll be meeting with federal ministers with Triple CLM in Canberra to discuss city shaping projects, including advocating for funding. 
Last week, we had a freedom of entry ceremony for the number 24 squadron with Air Force personnel marching through the city to mark the 70th anniversary of the squadron being granted its City of Adelaide name. Freedom of entry dates back to medieval times when military forces were granted permission to enter the city with their swords drawn, uh, drums beating, bands playing and colours flying without freedom of entry agreement, which indicates peaceful intent, military forces were often turned away at the city gates. Uh, and I thank Councillor Knoll for emceeing. Um, this year's event was the very first time a Ghana welcome and smoking ceremony was conducted by a Ghana custodian and the RAF Indigenous Liaison Officer uh, to grant access to the traditional lands of the Ghana people. Um, it was absolutely beautiful and very moving to witness. Additionally, last week, we launched our wellbeing dashboard, which will assist the City of Adelaide to monitor community wellbeing levels. We know that wellbeing is vital to the long-term prosperity of our city, and the City of Adelaide is proud to be working in partnership with state government on this through the Capital City Committee and launch three new wellbeing projects to support city businesses and residents. This month, we also celebrated Colonel William Light's 235th birthday with a reception in the Queen Adelaide Room. We welcome Tasting Australia to Victoria Square and the Adelaide Food Fringe to the city. I also attended GARUP, the Greater Adelaide Region Organisation of Councils Committee meeting on the 3rd of May. I'd like to take this opportunity, members, to also thank Justin Lynch. It's his last um, council meeting with us. If we could actually thank Justin for his work. It was fabulous having you. <laughs>
Thank you, Councillor Abrahams. Did I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Canole. Uh, members, any comments? If not, to the mover to sum up. Sum up. To the vote, those in favour, those against, this is carried. Members, we had uh, six questions on notice. Uh, we will take the answers of, as read, and of course, uh, the answers to those questions will be posted on our website. Um, I'll look for a mover. Oh, no, I don't need a mover. Just by leave of the floor. Show of hands, those in favour? Thank you, that is carried. Uh, questions without notice. Uh, Councillor Mac, uh, sorry, Councillor Martin. Sorry. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, a, um, a couple of supplementary questions. Um, in respect of 15.1, Councillor Moran asked, what is the current policy regarding financial dealings between council members? And having read the response of the administration, which is to cite Local Government Act sections 8, 5, 5, part 4, 5, part 4, 5, part 4, um, section 263, section 263A, the Code of Conduct, uh, the Independent Commissioner Against Corruption Act, um, and further information on ICAC, mm -hmm. I'm still unclear what our policy is. Is it our policy just to refer to Local Government Acts, or do we have a clear policy position on financial dealings between councillors? Acting CEO. Uh, through the presiding member, there isn't a uh, council policy position in relation to that question. And I think what the answer was trying to say was we felt as an administration it probably isn't necessary unless council so wishes to develop a separate policy position uh, because there's various um, legislation in place to help manage um, anything in relation to financial dealings between council members. Um, and, and Lord Mayor, uh, uh, supplementary, supplementary. Um, uh, in what circumstances is it okay for a councillor to have a financial arrangement with a councillor? Through the presiding member, I wasn't necessarily clear on what was prompting the question from Councillor Moran in the first case. I understand from her it was examples around um, council members lending money to each other. Um, I would consider that would be inappropriate and would be managed through the relevant provisions already in place. Uh, and more extensively, uh, would that also include, for example, business arrangements where money is borrowed between individuals for a corporate entity? Um, is that a, a similar arrangement? Through the presiding member, that depends on the circumstances, Councillor. Okay, thank you. Um, a further supplementary question, Lord Mayor, in respect of 15.2, um, I note that the administration in its response is claiming confidentiality, but in respect of the entrance to the car park for the display unit, will the car park be for the exclusive use of the proponent, that is the one that's proposed for the site, and um, there is no current entrance to the land from Archer Street where it is proposed that there will be an entrance. Will any new entrance be uh, constructed in such a way that there's a loss of car park? Acting C. Uh, thank you to the presiding member. Um, I haven't actually seen the proposal that's um, been submitted, so I need to take that on notice um, and get back to you. I'll take that as an undertaking in relation to the question. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And further supplementary question in respect of 15.3. Um, is Mr. McClurg the sole director of 88 O'Connell Proprietary Limited? The response is Mr. McClurg is a director. Is he the sole director? Acting Sam. Thank you, presiding member, through the chair. The answer um, is clear that the director is. James and James McClurg. I'm not um, clear on whether he is sole or not. I'll need to take that on notice and follow up. And uh, the administration tells us that 88 O'Connell Proprietary Limited, which is the delivery vehicle for the development, uh, has a paid up capital of $1. Um, are there any other financial guarantees in place uh, to protect the interests of council in the event of adverse circumstances? Acting C. 
Um, thank you, through the presiding member. Yes, there are. Thank you. And just one final question, Lord Mayor. 15.5, the administration tells us the total cost of expenditure on east-west bikeway planning and consultation, which was not proceeded with by this council, is $422,000. Um, I'm not clear if that includes City of Adelaide staff time. Um, could you confirm one way or the other for me? Acting C. Thank you, through the chair. Um, internal staff costs and overheads is within that table, Councillor. It's part of the 422,000. It's in the answer. Yep, thank you. No, I couldn't determine that, Lord Mayor. No. It says internal staff costs and overheads. Uh, I mean, oh. salaries. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Members, uh, questions without notice. Councillor Mackey. Oh, sorry. Did you have a question without notice? I did see Councillor Mackey before. Just, just coming off the last line of questioning, I'm wondering if you, Lord Mayor, or the, anyone in the administration is aware of any financial dealings that Councillor Moran's question is referring to? I'm just a bit flummoxed. Are they historical? Or? Uh, well, certainly I'm not, but I don't think that we're at liberty to answer that even for us. Thank Back you to the presiding member. I'm not aware either. Okay, cool. Uh, Councillor Mackey. Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, Three-part question. Can Council be advised the date uh, which, by which the 20,000 households and business addresses receive notification of the by forthcoming by-election and uh, the opportunity to enrol? That's the first part. Um, the second part, would you like me to read all three parts? We've got them on the screen. Um, thank you, thank Councillor Mackey. Thank you for supplying them ahead. How were the letters delivered and on what date they were dispatched, and how many new enrolments were received before the close of uh, uh, the roll? Acting C. Uh, thank you, um, through the presiding member. Thank you, Councillor Mackey, uh, for providing the question without notice in advance. Um, Firstly, to note that in a supplementary election, the timeframes can be quite tight, in, particularly through the enrolled phase, um, as the role needs to be updated and sent to EXA to be merged with the House of Assembly role. Um, 21,791 letters to occupiers of buildings uh, were sent by Australia Post on the 21st of April. A flyer was distributed by letterbox drop on the 23rd and 24th of April to approximately 15,000 residents and 5,000 businesses. Social media posts on all channels, Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn, uh, were distributed on the 19th, 23rd and 30th of April. Enroll information was included in the rates brochure that was sent to approximately 10,000 residences on the 19th of April. Digital screens at all City of Adelaide sites um, included enroll information from the 16th of April. Advertisements in the What's On e-newsletter, which reaches 70,000 on the 21st of April, was distributed. The roll closed on the 30th of April. Um, in terms of new enrolments, we received 180 in total, but the majority of these were duplicates, and we're still finalising that number, and we'll be able to share that with council members once we're able to confirm it. Thank you. Members, any further questions without notice? If not, we'll go to motions. Members, item 17.1, Councillor Kerr, electronic advertising. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I move as printed and CK seconder. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, uh, I bring this forward uh, because, uh, uh, in my view, uh, we uh, as a council need this. Um, now, you may recall that about well, just over a year ago, uh, there was a motion that I brought forward that was similar to this. Um, and the response was um, what we received was an administration comment, uh, but nothing further. Um, and the administration comment uh, from memory was similar to what we've been presented with tonight. And I think that that comment uh, tells us why we need uh, this motion to be passed. Um, the, uh, the comment refers to uh, two present uh, levels of, uh, two present levels of uh, regulation of uh, bright uh, electronic or electric signboard advertising. One is at the PDI, it's at the approval level, uh, and the other is where there may be a traffic safety issue. Uh, there is nothing in between, Lord Mayor. There is no. There is uh, quite plainly a huge gap in between. Now, 
Um, at the time that I moved the previous motion, um, I could cite one example on Hutt Street, in fact, on East Terrace, uh, where it meets Hutt Street, uh, of a signboard that's incredibly bright, is way too bright uh, for the streetscape at night. That was uh, a year and a half ago. And this year, when walking home uh, from the uh, fringe, uh, I observed uh, pedestrians who were walking from uh, the uh, East Parklands uh, up Hutt Street, walking past the signboard and doing this as they walked by. Um, it is manifestly too bright. So uh, there's a private health practitioner there. It's a, two, a twin face on a triangular board. It is way, way, way too bright. And the problem is we don't seem to have any power. And certainly we don't, we don't seem to have any real uh, motive uh, within the council, within the administration to be able to say to these providers, look, this is too bright, you need to turn it down. Um, we will have problems as these signboards proliferate across the city and the public uh, do not delegate regulation of this issue uh, to the state government. They look to their council to deal with this issue and this is only going to get worse. We know that there will be more, particularly electronic LCD uh, and LED uh, advertising. Uh, we know that it's going to proliferate and we know because of the technology, they have the capacity to be incredibly bright. And where they may be installed uh, at a certain brightness level, they can then be turned up and we won't have the power to tell them to turn it down. Um, uh, all their lights may be reinstalled. So relying on the traffic safety is nowhere near enough, I would submit, uh, because you can have stuff that's way too bright for the amenity and for pedestrians, uh, but won't present a traffic hazard. Um, what this proposes is that we have a committee uh, item where we are invited to provide feedback uh, and that we uh, get told what the actual uh, potential is. And if we need to uh, submit to the local, to state government for uh, legislative reform, we ought to be able to have uh, input into what the, um, what, the, what the wording is of that legislative reform. So I do uh, suggest we vote for it. Thank you, Councillor Caro. Councillor Hyde, did you wish to speak? No. Members? Councillor Martin? Um, look, I don't want to uh, speak to Lord Mayor. Um, I, uh, I'm sympathetic to what's being said, but I, I wonder if I can have some clarification from the administration. If the approval for the lighting is governed by the, uh, the PDI Act uh, and regulated by that Act, um, how is it possible or is it possible for another agency to become involved? That is to say, the standard is set by the PDI Act how is it possible for another agency to become involved? Or is it that a, uh, an amendment to the PDI Act is necessary in order to achieve the outcome that the councillor is seeking? Now, given our acting CE wasn't quite in the room, perhaps Director Devonish, are you happy to answer that one? Uh, through you, Chair, thanks for the question, Councillor. Um, I think you're right in what you're saying. So the PDI Act is the mechanism um, for the review of um, those types of issues through the development application process. Um, I think what we're suggesting in, in our response is that um, we can workshop um, with the council and certainly committed to a workshop as a result of this motion. Um, should council resolve to um, amend the way that we address or review these types of applications, we can certainly um, propose an amendment to the code and put that forward to, to the State Planning Commission for consideration. So that would be the way that we could, uh, we could influence the, um, uh, the, the ability to review the, the issues. And uh, just as a supplementary question to that, um, are we aware of whether the PDI Act actually says that there are limits on limits? Um, or is it something that um, is just a, uh, an accepted standard associated with particular kinds of lighting? Uh, through the Chair, there are design standards that exist and there is also the Australian Standards and Road Traffic Acts and, and other regulations that are referred to. Yeah, thank you. Members? Yes, Councillor Hyde and then Councillor Moran. Oh, just a question. Um, through Lord Mayor, does the administration have the ability and has it actually measured the particular sign that Councillor Keirig is referring to? Ability and have we? Acting C. Thank you. Uh, Director Devonish, please. Uh, through the presiding member, um, 
I, I can't say we have measured the sign, um, but certainly uh, willing to do so if the council is keen for that to occur. Could Lord Mayor, could I please get an undertaking for that sign to be measured? Because I'm hearing reference to road safety acts and yada yada yada, it is blinding. It is it is legitimately blinding to look at it. So, so members, um, we don't have within this. I'm assuming it's the one on Hunt Street that you're talking about at the end yeah, of Flinders. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I Frank. know. See, I know it. Yeah, we all do. That's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I do need you to say yes, Acting CEO. Have you taken that as an undertaking? Uh, yes, Presiding Member, I am. Excellent. Uh, Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, I won't be voting for this motion. Um, it is clearly ultra vires. But I do think that in individual cases, such as the sign on Hunt Street, which probably isn't complying to current standards, it's the uh, council's job to report that to the um, bodies that do make the changes. But for us to get involved when there's a body that's already um, working perfectly well, um, I think is uh, out of our permit. And uh, I'm certain if I moved this motion, I would be howled down by the mover as, uh, not uh, working council business. There are already rules, restrictions, and I would say that the sign mentioned probably isn't complying. So I think it's our job to point out this to the body that does regulate the signage. Thank you, councillor members. If not, back to the move to sum up. Oh, sorry, councillor Hyde. Um, I was just going to say, Lord Mayor, that I will be voting for this. I think this is, even if it's, even if legislatively it's not been bestowed upon us as part of our core business. It actually is core business. It really is. Um, this is this is signage in the public realm. We take care of that. Just because the sign is illuminated, um, if there was an A-frame standing right next to it, we'd be taking care of that. And it's certainly, it is a growing issue. It is a growing issue. Um, and uh, those that live in the more commercialised parts of the city, and I know Hutt Street has its ups and downs as far as commercialisation goes, but um, for those that live in the CBD, uh, our residents have to put up with this day in, day out. Um, and particularly, particularly when we, you know, have absolutely no atmospheric lighting in the city whatsoever, which, you know, I've broken record on that. Um, when you have pitch black, well not pitch black, but dimly lit streets, and you have very, very bright, um, uh, you know, LCD panels, perhaps inside shop fronts, it is light pollution. It's light pollution, and it actually is oppressive. The light that these things create now with the LEDs that we have and how bright they can go and how energy efficient they are, which also, you know, G's people up to turn them up more. Um, it is oppressive, and it's something that even if legislatively we don't have a clear authority to deal with, we should be dealing with it. There's more than one way to skin a cat. Um, uh, certainly, look, the ways, to solve, the ways to solve many problems that we encounter is to actually go to people and approach them. And I think even if we need to identify a methodology within the city whereby our staff are equipped and understand what the law is and how they can go and do with property owners and businesses who leave their signage on all night, even when they're long gone, because it is free advertising for them. Uh, if our staff, if this workshop delivers that process to our staff so that they can help our residents and our visitors to the city enjoy uh, the experience of coming to Adelaide a little bit more, then I think that's a wonderful thing. Moreover, the risk of us not addressing it now, um, I think is high. These types of signs are getting much cheaper, they're getting much brighter, um, and they're getting much more prevalent in the city. I mean, we, we see the JC Deco um, signs, which are obviously professionally installed, where you used to have the billboards that sort of flip around with the three things on them. Um, they've, they've all become digitised. Now, JC Deco are professional. They know what they're doing and they make sure their advertisements aren't, uh, aren't light polluting necessarily. Um, but other, other, uh, other people installing these signs don't have that level of professionalism. I think we should be in a, in a position as a capital city to assist them uh, in making sure those signs are not completely offensive to the human eye. Thank you. Uh, members, if not, back to the move to sum up. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Uh, just briefly, um, look, the fact that a councillor uh, suggests that this is ultra-virus tells us 
uh, precisely why we need to have uh, we need to approve this motion. Um, it is not ultra virus, Lord Mayor, to have a committee to have a workshop discussing potential legislative reform that will give council greater powers. Uh, it is actually uh, uh, there, the purpose of it is to address uh, the, any shortfall in power that plainly is the case at the moment. As Councillor Hyde put it so well, we need to be able to help uh, businesses. We need to be able to say to them, hey, listen, that sign is just too bright. We know it occurs. It does occur, regardless of the present regime. Uh, so there are gaps into which this falls. This is about getting the ball rolling to fix up this gap, particularly in advance of the rollout of ever more signage of this nature. Uh, so I say to councillors, it's a workshop item. Don't be frightened. We do need this. Let's proceed and let's find out exactly what we can do. And members to the vote, those in favour, those against. Council members, the division has been called. All those in favour of the motion, please stand, remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Mackey, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Kerrow, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kunal, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Hyde and Councillor Abraham today. Members, that takes us to 17.2. Councillor Mackey, parking as demand driver stimulus for city businesses. Uh, um, thank you, Lord Mayor. I'd, I'd like to move as printed, but with one just smart, slight variation under paragraph one, parking initiatives and slash or incentives, comma, including comma, but not limited to comma, free but timed on street parking campaigns. So I just want to make it clear that I'm not suggesting free all day long parking um, in respect of that uh, paragraph. Okay. Thank you, Councillor. No. I'll look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Uh, Councillor Mackey, would you like to speak to your motion? I'll reserve my right. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak to him? I'll reserve my right. Uh, members? Councillor Hyde? Um, Lord Mayor, well, I'm pleased to see, I'm pleased to see Councillor Moran is supporting something which is pretty well akin um, to Driver's Month, no less. Fantastic, free but time on street parking campaigns. Park and plays back. That's phenomenal. What an about face. Um, Councillor, and, 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 and I, well, I just, well, speak to, Lord speak Lord to Lord the Lord motion, Lord. please. Don't worry, it's not personal. I'm sure Philip is Council. going to support Come on. this as well. And, Member, you know, speak to the motion, Mackie please. wouldn't have been on board with, uh, with a park and, park and play either. I can't recall if, if he was in the chamber at the time. Um, I'm casting my mind back. But uh, look, this, this, is, this is a wolf in sheep's clothing, Lord Mayor. This is a wolf in sheep's clothing because, and I draw members' attention to three, revenue generation of expanding the on-street paid parking regime expansion of paid parking. This motion parades around as something um, that is going to have free parking and bring people into the city, but it is, uh, with one hand, we will offer some limited on-street uh, parking uh, at a reduced or free uh, cost. Um, but on the other hand, we will strip away, we will strip away thousands and thousands uh, of commuter car parks, which is what they are, and while this 40,000 figure gets thrown around a lot, um, and it'll probably be thrown around again, we know that 17,000 of our car parks are on street. And out of those 17,000, I think we have about 3,000 that have sensors in them. And out of that 3,000, it's a smaller figure, um, it's a smaller figure which are paid. Now, this is seeking to create more paid on street car parking. Um, it is going to act as a disincentive to bring people into the city. And furthermore, Lord Mayor, I appreciate the mover has put timed in there. I just implied it was in there anyway. But um, we also know that when people do not pay, and look, if you uh, spoke to our previous council commander, um, uh, council commander Godden, who was in charge of on-street car parking for a long time, she knew it like the back of her hand, she would say the experience, and even I think the psychology probably supports it as well, when people pay for something, when they have paid for something to be there and they know it finishes at a certain time, they are far, far less likely to go over. When they've got something that's free, they are far, far more likely to overstay. So ultimately what this will deliver onto us um, uh, is a reduction in people that are coming to the city for longer, for longer stints and parking parklands roads to come and shop and have lunch and, and that sort of thing. 
um, it will deliver a disincentive for them and for other people that want to come for casual casual short-term parking uh, we will likely in all likelihood see across the city in these zones people overstaying their welcomes which will of course have the effect because our if i can have two more minutes i don't think members to the chamber can you allow i don't think i'll use it all I did so, and so so lord mayor the uh, in addition to that we will see those people who then overstay their welcomes because you have a perhaps a psychological a propensity to do when you haven't paid for it. Our, our excellent, um, uh, well-equipped and highly efficient community information officers will go and give them parking fines. Parking fines, which uh, we actually don't have the ability um, uh, to lower the cost of. As Councillor Moran has tried many times, it's a legislative thing. So um, all of this is going to conflate into this into this ginormous parking monster, essentially, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, I am very pleased to see, and of course, if you get a parking fine, you're not, even free parking, you're not, you're not coming back. You're not coming back. And the other people that would have taken your short-term uh, parking spot are going to get really frustrated because we know the optimal occupation is at 80%. So these are all the things I learned from Commander God, by the way. Um, uh, and so, Lord Mayor, we're, we're creating a parking monster here with this. Um, uh, I appreciate the intent may be there, um, but I really don't think it's going to do the trick. I don't think it's going to work. Um, I'm glad councillors want to support park and play. If it was just one, I'd say uh, bring it back in, but the rest of it makes it unworkable, I'm afraid. Okay, members. Uh, Councillor Mackey, you wish to speak to it? Yep. And then Councillor Knoll. Thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Look, I, um, I'd like to just remind the chamber, members in the chamber, that this is calling for a report that seeks to understand and maximise the opportunities associated with parking availability. Now, I've been a trader in this city for over 20 years, and I absolutely know the important role that the perception of securing an on-street car park, and it is perhaps one of the more quaint aspects of, of us as a capital city that we, we do, our community has a, a charming small town approach that the first place you, you go, if you're going somewhere, is you try and put a park outside the place you need to go. It is a, it's a charming aspect of our character. Um, and then when, you, when you've done that and you find that there isn't, then you might have to park a little further away, or indeed you might end up in one of the city's operated U parks or, or other commercial off-street car parking. This report is seeking to elucidate some information that will help us test our current parking uh, uh, regulation regime. Um, I'm sure I'm not the only elected member to have paid the fines of stakeholders when they believe uh, that, and, and when they believe that the stakeholders' uh, grievance against the city uh, is, is unfair. I have myself in the last 12 months um, and I do it quietly. Um, uh, but I understand both as a retailer um, and people who are providing hospita uh, hospitality that um, there's a, we have a whole lot of power and let's not kid ourselves, uh, colleagues, um, we are addicted to car parking revenue. It is such a major revenue stream for the city. Of course, I also believe that um, we, we have to stimulate other modes of, of people movement. I, I'm, I'm not arguing against that. Uh, and when I sum up, I, I will perhaps have a little bit more to contribute in that regard. But I reject totally that this is a stalking horse for uh, reducing the attractiveness of the city. And I also um, just implore colleagues to, to appreciate, we hold the key to the taxing of space in this city. Uh, and that in fact, the, the money that visitors to our city, the customers of our city contribute to our operating budget, which then goes through to deliver public good, to deliver public realm, to deliver parklands, to deliver other services. That, that, that contribution of car parking revenue is in fact very, very close to uh, equaling the uh, actual money that we gain from residential and commercial rates. Um, so 
um, I will continue at some. Members, Councillor Canal. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I think I think uh, I can appreciate the intent of the motion, but again, no one comes to town for free parking. Um, the complaints that we do have. Uh, the, the price of parking when people are at the, at the main uh, points where they wish to uh, go to, you know, say around the, around the lawn and other, other very uh, high profile areas within the city. So that's the price of that car parking, which a lot of that is not under our control. Um, and there, you know, we have commercial operators that do that. So that in itself won't deliver too much. The point here is that we need to engage with our community and with the shoppers, et cetera, and deliver value for them that encourages them to go in the city. But it's only uh, the parking is an initiative, but during the course of the day, there is car parks in a lot of the areas, but again, it's not necessarily where they want to shop. So, you know, it's, it is difficult though. So from where I'm going to go, they're not coming in for free parking or cheap parking. Uh, certainly it can be an, a part of a deal, and we can use that as uh, in conjunction with other things, but it, uh, we, uh, we have AIDA and, and they are truly coordinating much more about the value, but it's also about access to our city because in a lot of the times where, uh, you know, the majority of people want to come here, it's the congestion then at that time, it's the difficulty, it's the, so we, we need to be looking at all the other drivers about encouraging and opening people to come here and it's about then the convenience, it can be linked with price and has to be linked with offer. So. This on its own won't deliver too much because it, it doesn't link to anything that people are going to want. Um, we have to have the whole the, uh, package that uh, uh, encourages them to come to the city rather than it be uh, other than the other uh, uh, shopping uh, precincts around uh, Greater Adelaide. And I think that will be a, a difference rather than necessarily what we're going to do in our small way. Because again, yes, we are at this moment still addicted to car parking, um, but we can use it as a weapon. We can use it in ways that will encourage and enable people to do things. We just need to embed this differently because there are things that people will pay for and, and uh, usually special events. Um, so we can do things uh, to make this easier, but we can also encourage people to take public transport and things like that as well and embed those sorts of uh, uh, you know, modes of transport into the reasons why you come to town so they'll actually spend the money in town anyway. And it's our job as councillors to find other means of income that uh, decouples us from this so that we are able to uh, still sustain the council without necessarily having to uh, destroy our own incomes to do that. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Councillor Donovan. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, well, I wasn't going to support this uh, because a parking-led recovery is called a 1960s solution and we've moved far beyond that. However, through the debate and through uh, Councillor Mackey's um, expansion on the rationale, I realised that, of course, as we look at maximising the opportunities associated with parking availability within the CBD so to support city businesses who have been impacted, actually the most effective way to do that is through improving access for bikes and for pedestrians and for public transport. Adelaide is not a little special snowflake whereby that is not true as it is in every other city around the world. So actually this will support uh, looking at ways of improving access by other forms of transport, which I absolutely would support and therefore I can happily shift my thinking on it and support Councillor Mackey's report. Councillor Hyde, did you have a question? Um, I was just wondering if uh, through you, Lord Mayor, Councillor Donovan, could clarify on that because I don't, I, I'm, a, I'm a bit amused as to how that. Yeah, Councillor Donovan's happy to. It's, happy to yeah. clarify, certainly. So look at the that council requests that the administration prepares a report that seeks to understand and maximise the opportunities associated with parking availability. So the ways, so then it goes on to mention a number of ways in which that could be considered, in particular, ignoring all of those points, but going to the central tenant of the motion, the ways to maximise parking availability is of course to provide options to people who choose to ride, walk and access public oh, transport. Okay. Adelaide Thank is you. unique by no Thank means you. unique Thank in you, that Jackson way. Donovan. So by providing more opportunities Thank and you, options, Jackson. then we maximise parking availability for those who would choose to drive. Research well supports this fact. Thank you members. 
That's enough. Thank you. Uh, would anybody else like to speak no, no, to the no, motion? I, I have a question through Lord Mayor of the Administration. Is that there? Is that how they would construe it? Because I, it took a lot for me. I got there in the end, but it took a lot for me to get to. Somehow, this is going to deliver more bicycle parking. Acting C. Like Interpretation. Uh, thank you, presiding member. Um, certainly has expanded, I think, my sense of what's possible with this report. Thank you, <laughs> Councillor Donovan, and we can certainly, um, my preference would be that we um, stick to just the on-street parking, but certainly if Council wishes that we take a broader view, noting we do have a city access strategy that is underway, which does talk to the multiple ways in which people can access in the city, uh, my preference would be that we do stick to the um, the items detailed um, in the motion. Yeah, Councillor Moran. Yeah. Uh, I don't understand why that was so confusing. The motion clearly wants to. Um, is something amusing there? Yeah, because it was confusing. Thanks. Oh, well, you find a lot of things confusing. Oh, no. Members, uh, please debate the item before us. Could you ask the members to be quiet then, Lord Mayor? Um, I don't think it's very confusing at all. Um, if you uh, let everybody have free parking with no time limits, there'd be no availability of any parking. So the, to increase availability, you have to increase turnover. And that's clearly what this is saying. But also to increase availability for people that can take alternate modes of transport is clearly increasing the availability of every other Deputy person Lord that takes Mayor, please. I'm a little bit tired of this, Lord Mayor. The the bullying and uh, sarcastic Moran, uh, bypass. I have called is... it. Please continue. I'll just stop the clock there for a while while I collect my thoughts. Thank you. Um, availability is the end result, and that can be reached, as I said, by putting more car parks in the city, by turning them over more quickly and encouraging other modes of transport. I don't think that's a reach to understand that this what is what this motion's uh, talking about. Um, of course, if councillors don't understand motions, um, it is uh, a good convention to ring up the person that has moved the motion and ask them what they meant, rather than be little smirk and giggle during the uh, council meeting which I find very unbecoming. And I find it very offensive that the Lord Mayor picks- uh, Point of clarification. <laughs> point, point of clarification, Lord Mayor. Um, the puzzlement expressed by council was, was in, was in relation- on, Sorry, Lord Mayor. Mayor. He's He's a, if the bullying can cease, I might finish my point of clarification. If we can Lord actually, you, what is your point? My point of clarification is that uh, the query and the puzzlement, if you will, that was uh, that was evinced by other members tonight was in relation to question. the new element. To, was it what? This is not a question. I'm waiting for the bullying to stop. So See, this is members, Councillor Kerr. I'm waiting for the bullying to stop. Councillor Kerr, thank right. you. I'll try and give it a third shot. The uh, query that was put forward by councillors uh, was in relation to a new element brought into the chamber tonight by Councillor Donovan. Therefore, the assertion again with the bullying. In the middle of my debate. The it's not, it's an interruption. Again with the bullying. Councillor Kerr, it's an interruption. Yeah. If you could please get to the point, I think I, we all I'll understand speak, what you're saying. I'll speak when the bullying stops. Councillor Kerr. I've actually got That's the floor here, and he has asked a question which has taken up three minutes, which fine. isn't a question. This, this, this and I think I'm you've made your point. No, you've no, made no, your no, point. I really object to Councillor Kerr, you've bullying. made your point. Councillor Moran, if you could just wait, please, so I can preside over the meeting. That would be great. Councillor Kerr, you've made your point. With, with, with respect, I have to finish. With, with respect, respect, you've and made your point, and I'm asking you to stop speaking. The aspersions I'm asking you to sit down. Thank you. Thank you. Members, I stopped the clock. Councillor Moran, you have a minute left on the clock. Thank you very much. Um, I uh, think it's very obvious from this motion um, that the uh, mover is trying to increase the availability of people that choose to take their cars into the city to do shopping, which often includes mothers uh, with small children or people picking up large items. It is a nuisance when those parks are taken up by people that could have popped on the bus, ridden their bike or walked in. So I think that's a very clear motive for this motion. 
and I'm puzzled that it's uh, it's seen as bullying that uh, that uh, we point that out that it's a clear motion. The, I think Team Adelaide now, and I will be calling it a vision, will vote against this. This is far too superior, superior to the lunatic. Councillor Moran, please stick of, to debating the motion of Councillor Moran. Month. Well, it has been mentioned by previous speakers um, that um, I voted against car months and vote for this. <laughs> They're so different, it's, it's ludicrous. Um, but I think that uh, Team Adelaide, having voted for car month, will vote against this, and I find that hysterical. Members, we've got Councillor Abraham today and then Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, Lord Mayor, question through you to the mover of the motion. Um, wondering whether if uh, they would um, they would want to take this motion in, in parts. There's a certain parts of this that I do uh, that I do support, but there's others that, that I don't. But I'm happy to leave that with you. And the, I'll and the ask mover. the mover. No, thank you. Deputy Lord Mayor. I was actually going to ask the same thing because um, uh, it's completely different to how I walked in here thinking what this motion was going to be, and then when Helen Donovan twisted it or turned it into a way she she read it. Um, so, but the administration were very clear that you're going to take it as what the intent of the mover was, not in, in the way that Councillor Donovan has said. So I'm just, I'm going to vote against it. Thank you. Okay. Just a point of clarification, a couple more questions. Can, can, we, sorry, can we move? We haven't gone back to the mover, so. Okay, the move, no, we Can can't we take it in parts without the uh, the uh, endorsement of the mover. Uh, Lord Mayor, I would wish to have the motion taken in its whole. Thank you. Asked and answered. Thank you, Councillor Mackey. Members, Councillor Donovan. Just a question, Lord Mayor. Can I just clarify, given the uncertainty, that uh, the consideration of alternate forms of transport will be included within the wording of the motion, noting, as uh, as mentioned by uh, the acting CEO, that uh, we already have the city access strategy in train, therefore there should be a fair bit of that work that's ready to be partnered with this I motion. I should go back to the mover because it's not currently in the motion as it's written. So I will go back well, to well, Councillor it is, it's Mackey. Because that, it is in the motion because that would be literally the most effective way to maximise parking. So that's implied within the first part, but it's not. I will just go back the to particular. the mover of the motion to understand if that was the intention of the motion because that is not how I read it either. Thank you, Councillor Mackey. Uh, Lord Mayor, it is part of the intention of the motion. And I, I should add, for the benefit of members, I did seek a contribution and input and feedback from council administration in the framing of this and their contribution substantially improved uh, my first draft and I'm grateful for Thank that. Thank you. Members, are there any more speakers to the motion? If not, I'm going to go to Councillor Mackey to sum up. Um, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I'm... <laughs> As, as much as you know, some like a, 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 a spirited debate and, and others would prefer not, I'm glad to see that the ideas contained within this motion are attracting scrutiny and debate. We, we have, um, uh, uh, we have as a capital city, uh, a responsibility and an opportunity to ensure that our city businesses, our retailers, our hospitality providers can optimise their potential to attract visitation. Of course, that visitation comes through different modes, public transport, cycling, walking, and of course, vehicular and motorcycle movements. We own the lion's share, we own a dominant market share of, uh, well, we own all of the on-street regulated parking spaces and we own a lion's share of off-street uh, through our new park um, business. Um, that is precisely why since the 1970s, um, the city of Adelaide has enjoyed, the people of, of, the people of Adelaide have enjoyed the most affordable uh, capital city parking rates in the country. Um, that is a, an incredibly powerful tool to moderate and influence consumer behaviour and people movement. Um, as, as a capital city, um, we need to walk 
and chew gum. We need to cycle and chew gum. We need to drive and park and chew gum. Um, we, we, it, it's a very, very complex business that we have. And I, again, in concluding, Lord Mayor, I just remind uh, our colleagues, um, we derive a very substantial amount of ultimate public benefit through the taxing of those car parking spaces. And we also rate and we derive income from the commercial off-street car parking uh, businesses as well. All of this needs to be considered in a holistic way in order to optimise and experiment and tweak our, our, our parking regulation regime. Um, and I commend the motion to all members. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. All those in favour of the motion, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Moran, Councillor Mackey, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Kerr, Councillor Ho, Councillor Canole and Councillor Martin. 17.3, Deputy Lord Mayor, uh, motion on notice reviewing councillors' offices. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. I'll take that uh, the motion, motion is read. Um, look for a seconder. I look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Um, I um, asked, uh, this came about because I asked administration in regards to um, having our offices um, used for the public and it was pointed out to me that councillor uh, former councillor Moran, um, sorry milani um, had a motion so i'm resurrecting her motion and uh, bringing it forward um, requesting a workshop to review um, the report and what was discussed i think probably in previous term of council I think it's a, a great opportunity to begin the discussions in regards to uh, the offices that uh, are used. It's a, the beautiful, beautiful offices, and they're not used much by councillors. And I think it will be a great opportunity to uh, review them, opening up to a gallery about the history of the city of Adelaide, or um, you know maybe hiring, hiring them out as meeting rooms or um, community groups to gather and meet. Um, possibilities are endless. And so I'm just looking forward just to have a workshop, a discussion in regards to what was previously discussed. I understand there's budget implications and the costings. Maybe some people have got other ideas. Um, and we can all discuss them and, um, and review um, the, uh, the use of the building. Councillor Abraham Stan. Right, Members? Councillor Martin? Uh, yes, look, thank you, Lord Mayor. And I do want to thank uh, Councillor Kouros for this proposal. And I, I do look forward to the media reporting of this issue. Um, we are a council in serious debt. We've got a debacle, as uh, one media commentator called it. Uh, we've allocated no money to maintain our aquatic centre until 23, 24. Uh, we can't afford to clean our streets. Our streets are filthy. They are uh, not, Councillor. I'm sorry. Lord Point Mayor, order, they I are am not. sorry. That Council is my Council. view. And if you wish to debate me, then you should take your turn. Please don't debate. What about this one? Sorry. Streets. Point of order, Lord Mayor. Councillor Martin has said we are not funding any maintenance on the aquatic centre until 23, 24. That is incorrect. We're not funding any maintenance on the aquatic oh, centre well, after 23, 24. Every well, time one of us... I'm sorry, if councillors are going Stop. to... Thank you. Uh, please, please. Lord Councillor Mayor. Moran, stop it. Lord Mayor, this is... Councillor Martin, horrible. I have stopped the clock. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Look, we, we have a debt barkle, as I said, one of the media commentators reported. Our streets are dirty, that is my view. Councillor, I am going to interrupt you. We are speaking to reviewing the councillor's offices. Uh, Lord Mayor, you're interrupting to... I am because you're not speaking to the motion. Uh, Lord Mayor, I am speaking to this motion, and every time you interrupt, I am prevented from speaking to it. My point is, we do not have much money. We don't even mow the parklands like we used to. And here, in the midst of this debt problem, Councillor Kouros wants to create new offices for elected members in place of the very areas that have just been renovated. Now, when the plans were presented to this council in 2016, they were very nice plans, by the way, um, when they first came along. And the last costing was $800,000. Uh, to create new offices for councillors. And let me tell you, Lord Mayor, they were flash. 
They included a lounge area. I think there was even bean bags in there. There was a kitchen. It was just, uh, you know, it was flash. It really was flash. So it is now proposed that that 800,000, which is probably a million by now, should be outlaid. And again, we're going to create something like a gallery in councillor offices, which is what, another two, three hundred thousand dollars? Now, Lord Mayor, people say to me, ratepayers say to me, I had one say to me this week, how on earth did you people get into such debt? And the answer is, there are fruitcake ideas like this one that come up all the time from people like Councillor Kouros. This is a dud. It is exactly the sort of behaviour that ratepayers are critical of. Spending money on unnecessary expenses such as new offices. 1 million, 1.2, 1.5 million with a gallery? Who knows what it will be? Why don't we just spend the money elsewhere where it is needed? Councillor Hyde. Uh, could I just start by asking through Lord Mayor that Councillor Martin withdraw fruit cake? I think to make that reflection on your colleagues is rather offensive. Lord Mayor, I called it a fruitcake idea, not my colleague. A fruitcake idea is a perfectly legitimate expression for something which I hold. I'll take that as a no. Okay. That's right. Okay. Now, if the clock may start now. A um, fruitcake idea, Lord Mayor, seeing as we're you know, going to allow fruitcake ideas, you know, what about Councillor Moran's idea to can the central market okay. arcade? Met for councillors, in councillors, no, Councillor Hyde, you will stop. No, you will stop. We are going to debate the motion in front of us, and the motion in front of us is calling for a workshop to look at the councillors' offices. Right. Well, then that is what the motion is about. I'm, I'm very, I'm very happy to call for that motion. I'm very happy to call for it. If only I was able to talk about the information we have in confidence, which is the fact that we know this building generates revenue for the city. This building generates revenue. I can't say how much, but this building generates revenue for the city. Now, um, when we're looking at it, of course, uh, us as councillors have offices here in this building, in this, in this great august building. And let's just reflect on what this building was used for for the majority of the last term of council. It was empty. Those two levels up there, Two entire levels were empty under the under the guidance of, of councillors who ran for election and sitting here with us today. Those levels were empty. We're Lord, paying Lord to Mayor. maintain a building. Paying to maintain a building no, that Martin. was empty. Well, do you have a point of order? Oh, well, why not? Do you? Yes. Well, could you tell me what it is, please? No, uh, the point of order is that there was no such motion that ever came to council. No, if you right. can actually, not, what I'm are you? Sure. What is the I'm point of order? Sure. The inference is that councillors in the last council had control over the rental accommodation on the second floor or the first floor. Well, I'm sorry, Lord Mayor. I don't want to. I don't want to debate standing up with Councillor Martin, but obviously councillors do have control of those things. And if councillors were not aware that the majority of this building lay empty, despite the fact that ratepayers were paying for it, well, then they're negligent. So they should have been aware. So either you know and okay. you're not doing anything about you it. You were a councillor you and you're a general know. manager. Don't you take offence to that and being called negligent? Well, I think that's defamatory. I'll add that to the long list. Okay. But well, okay. Negligent. Lord Mayor, I'm Thank you. You're calling the Lord Mayor Council negligent. Red, I find that against very offensive. Members, members, can we? This is ridiculous. <laughs> it's absurd. Okay, so if I can get back to Town Hall. Town Hall, which was laying empty for many, many years now, mostly during the last term of council when the finance department moved over to the Colonel Light Centre. Right? I've done my hard work. I know what's happening. Um, uh, Lord Mayor, so counts, those, those councillors are now the ones talking about not reusing the space. Now, we have oodles of space in here, and that's part of the reason why councillors have individual offices. Most local governments, most local governments do not have their councillors having individual offices. Well, we don't. Right? Well, even ones that are two councillors in one office. We are completely over -spec'd. There is no need for it. Councillors should be able to wear, to share, well, obviously, I'm going to require more time because it was about two and a half minutes. Well, that's with the leave of the chamber, Councillor. Well, no, 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 Lord Mayor, if, if Councillor Moran and Councillor Martin are able to... Members to the chamber, are you time. happy to allow more time? Thank you. 
well, what if I wanted my extra couple of minutes? You are in we your extra couple of minutes now. I'm sorry, between, between getting abused and having legal action thrown at me. <laughs> Councillor Hyde, you're wasting the time. Again and again allocated. and again. Well, I'm just, it seems there's one rule for one person. No, there is not one rule for one person, person and not one rule for um, another, Councillor well, Hyde. Look, look, Lord Mayor, the point I'll finish on is that this is an opportunity to take space that is not used by councillors. Most councillors are not in their offices. Most councillors don't use their offices. Take space that is not used and actually repurpose it for the community, which is, I'm sorry, Lord Mayor, I'm still getting, I'm still getting interruptions here. Councillor Martin tells me to work harder. I work 70 hours a week. I would really like him to withdraw that statement. Councillor Martin? Mayor, that's that's oh, rather offensive. That's rather offensive. I don't know, I've never seen anybody on that. And Councillor Moran is saying that I'm rather offensive okay. now across the chamber. Members, I can't do this, Lord could, I, I honestly, I honestly... I have actually stopped the clock. I did stop the clock. Members, can you all actually be quiet while a member is speaking? Can you be quiet, Councillor Moran? Councillor Hyde, can you please talk to the motion before you? Thank you. I'm trying to. I'm trying to, Lord Mayor. Um, so the point that I would make in summing up is that this space is not used by councillors. It's seldom used by councillors. Half of them would be surprised to their papers sometimes, but they can do it on their iPad. They can do it at home. They don't need an office there. Now, if we had a, a smaller shared space with maybe half the number of desks in it, that would more than suffice. In the meantime, what you can do with this fantastic state heritage listed building, town hall, the people's hall, is actually look at providing spaces in the building that the community can use, whether it's a gallery, whether it's rooms uh, similar to the Queen Adelaide room, but smaller, that community groups can come and hire. Obviously, we offer grants for upstairs um, to subsidise their use of this building. Um, why wouldn't we have uh, some smaller rooms at community groups? I know I have community groups in my ward that would relish the opportunity to come in here to town hall. Um, and so that's what this is about, Lord Mayor. Now, would we deliver it all at once? Of course not. But if we can have an approach to maximising the usability of this building, then I think that's very exciting. And I'd also just want to take the opportunity to commend the administration for actually bringing in other parties to fill up the spaces upstairs. It's only over the last few months that that space has begun to be used. There's a little bit more hustle and bustle in the building now, and I think that's a really good thing to be able to go up to those upper levels and not see them completely desolate and deserted. Councillor Kerr. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, other uses of the councillor's offices, uh, would that include maybe having parties, Lord Mayor? having receptions for councillors who quit and cause by-elections. Uh, is that something that might be envisaged? Um, we could serve fruitcake uh, at those Cancel. parties, perhaps. Your point, uh, Councillor Calling Kerr. this motion fruitcake-free is absolutely not a hypocrisy. Uh, it should be uh, regarded with the absolute contempt that it has received. Um, I, I actually won't be voting for this motion because although I commend Councillor Kuros uh, for thinking uh, actively about utilising the space in Town Hall. I think it would be a mistake uh, and I think the messaging wouldn't be quite right. Um, councillors at present do share uh, offices. We, we are not allocated individual offices per councillor and to further dilute the resources I think would be something of an impediment, something of a uh, something of a uh, undervaluing of the importance of the role. Um, we do want to attract people from all walks of life. We want to attract people, for example, who may have workplaces where there is no office as such. They may work with their hands uh, for a living. Um, we want to encourage people from all spreads of life. And we don't want to say to them, well, it's assumed that you've already got an office space. Um, so th th these are the these are the concerns. I think that at present the, the messaging. I, I don't think this would be uh, appropriate messaging on balance. But I do commend Councillor Kuros for thinking actively about using this building uh, in, and expanding its its reach in other ways. And I think that can be continued down the track, um, but just not uh, by this motion, my dear. Members, any other speakers? If not, I'll go back to Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, um, Lord Mayor. This uh, fruit cake of an idea was actually voted on by the last term of council, and this fruit cake of an idea was actually discussed as a workshop with the councillors. This fruit cake of an idea was actually agreed upon by the councillors to have a workshop, and that's all I'm asking to do is to have 
a workshop. I'm not asking to spend any money. I'm not asking to send messages out there that we're going to be spending a lot of money. All I'm saying is that let's have a look at our building. Let's have a look at what we can use the space for. It doesn't have to be to the elaborate ver version that the fruitcake of the idea that these councillors that are still in council voted on last term of council. But all, all I'm saying is that um, let's come together. Let's come together as a group. We're responsible for this building. We're responsible for what, what we should, what should be doing here. And, uh, you know, let's have a conversation but it appears to me that this might be a very difficult conversation to have because it seems to me that um, it, all it's based on is an actual rivalry in, in, in personal um, agenda. This is about a building that is owned by ratepayers and if it can be utilised in a space by maybe a third party, maybe a gallery, well, I don't know, I'm just throwing ideas. I would have loved to have worked with my colleagues on this and resurrect it, have a look at it, talk about it, come together like people do. When they are in this role, they talk and they, they discuss about options. I am not talking about spending money. All I'm asking for is a workshop to review our current offices that are beautiful offices and there, has an there are opportunities out there that we could discover with each other. But obviously, some members, that's just a little bit hard to do to have conversations with one another. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Division, yes. yes. Council members, the division has been called. All those in favour, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Donovan, Councillor Ho, Councillor Canole, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Hyde and Councillor Abraham today. Members, uh, 17.4, Councillor Canole, Cycling Infrastructure Strategic Action Plan. I move, I move this motion and look Thank for a second. Thank you. I have a seconder in Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Okay, thank you. Um, a question just before we uh, do start. Um, now with this particular motion, is, is there uh, envisaged a, a particular time or a date, or does it need to be uh, uh, put into the motion um, you know, so that we get a, a fairly, fairly quick report back and uh, what we can do or stuff? Acting C. do we require a time frame? Uh, thank you through the presiding member. And the admin comment does say that we will commence work if the motion is carried, um, and we would hope to bring that through to Council in November 2021. Thank you. I think, thank you for that. Um, so I'll start. Look, it's, it's pretty straightforward, and let's face it, we have had a, a very uh, a difficult um, you know, discussion uh, with, with cycling in the, in the city, and I mean, with the East, West, et cetera, with the difficulties we've had with that. And here is now our ability for us to start again, but do it again in a way that uh, we can uh, set out a proper uh, plan and action and, uh, and start to put in place uh, real um, you know, uh, improvements that the cyclists and, and working with the various stakeholders that they can uh, um, you know, see the benefit of, and we can do this incrementally. It's, so it, it's all we're doing, and I uh, had heard before that we had a cycling a network plan in 2004 from uh, a, 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 one of the person who spoke on radio. Um, so again, here we are, I mean, I, and I didn't know we had one, and uh, so hence the, well, the question, hence the motion. So I think this is about bringing all the parties together and doing something constructive. It's working with the data that they actually collect and the data we collect, and let's start using that to inform us how we can do that. Let's prioritize the different uh, uh, you know, elements that we can put in place, uh, working together with all the stakeholders. And it does mean when we say community, it does mean residents, it does mean all of those that, that will benefit from this. Because at the end of the day, we want to um, enhance the uh, you know, the, tra the, the, the movement within the city. And it's not a question or an argument about cars versus bikes. It's a case that we already have quite a lot of great infrastructure. I mean, and I've made a point, obviously, of cycling around the city uh, and, and to experience what we have so that I am able to speak more authoritatively. But it's enabling us to, one, improve the, uh, the access to our city through our parklands, because there's a lot of work outside and the better coordination between what other councils are doing ourselves is, is really important. It's now enabling them to go through there uh, and use 
use the parklands and get around through the parklands without necessarily going to the city. Because once you start hitting, you know, these between five and 10 uh, sets of lights, trying to go through one way or the other, you're actually not getting through the city very quickly. And it's quite likely you'll be able to get around it with a good infrastructure a lot better without all uh, the stops and starts and without all the traffic congestion if you didn't want to use the city at all. And you will do it in a way that it's a lot more amenable, a lot more beautiful. So there are things, uh, and, and that would uh, also lend itself for people uh, with pedestrians and people walking around the city as well. So we'll, we actually work with a few sets of infrastructure for a broader community rather than just for the cyclists uh, purely by themselves. So I think if we're looking at that, if we talk about families, I looked, I thought about that, and most of the infrastructure for families is either in or next to the parklands. So then in other words, we're enabling families now to move one step closer to the city so that we start to see what sort of destinations. And the whole point of cycling, the whole point of any transport is to get from some from a, your place to somewhere you want to go. And we have to actually work that out as we go, because there are ways to get through the city. Just one more minute. Um, sorry, ways. I need to leave the chamber. Yep. Thank you. I mean, there are ways that we can get through the city, which are much safer than, than the main roads, which we can actually uh, work with so that the cyclists can use it, and pedestrians can, but we can also start to put an economy around that because a lot of the smaller streets uh, have uh, capacity to have retail, etc., as well. So for that, we're activating more of the city. We're activating a much more amenable place. And because the main roads will remain uh, congested until the last car stops driving. So you want to take them away from that, the, that situation and enable them to do that better and make it safer. And safety is first, as that encourages people to get into town. So, I mean, I commend this motion to people. Thank you. Councillor Hyde, did you wish to speak? Um, I only have a question. Um, through Lord Mayor, does the administration read into this um, that the Cycling Infrastructure Strategic Action Plan would come back in some form recommending the removal of hundreds of car parks, even at various points throughout the city? Is, is that, I'm just trying to understand what, what work I would be expecting back. Through the presiding member, um, until the work is done, I can't really answer that, councillor. It could be um, in relation to access through um, parklands, it could be around improving existing access ways. There's multiple different proposals that could be explored. Obviously, we would workshop um, and uh, workshop this with uh, members in the coming months before finalising any infrastructure strategic action plan. Um, it also references uh, appropriate types of treatment, which could be um, various different elements as well. So I would suggest at this point, councillor, you would wait until a workshop to better understand what types of content uh, members would envisage seeing um, sitting within this infrastructure strategic action plan. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I'll just speak quickly and look, I will be supporting this, but I just wanted to tackle that matter head on, um, because even though I know that's not the intent of the mover, sometimes um, things get picked up in the administration and they jog along in a particular direction uh, until they can be tackled back to the ground by the council chamber. <laughs> um, and I just wonder if a strategic, uh, a cycling infrastructure uh, SAP would, um, you know, give, uh, give certain advocates within the administration for the a removal of cars from the road and preference for bike and that sort of thing um, make them feel like they have the ability to, to recommend plans that do that. Um, and we know that that happens from time to time. And we all saw the FOI that came through our inbox today regarding the East West Bikeway and the long sort of sordid history of that um, escapade. Um, now that's really a debacle. If I can do it, that's Councillor, really a debacle. can we stick to the um, so, uh, motion before us? Yes, so this, this I think, um, Hopefully, it does not come back in a form recommending the mass expulsion of motorists and cars from the city. Um, uh, certainly, I think there is a really, there is a, see, the, the great shame about the East West debate, Lord Mayor, is it has suffocated the argument, which this, this is the argument, that there is so much low hanging fruit in order to support cyclists coming into the city. And, the, and we have done none of that. None of that. Well, we've been uh, faffing about prevaricating on the on the on the east west. It has it has it has totally totally sapped everyone's energy um, uh, uh, when it when it comes to, to talking about this issue, um, and it's given the city a bad name and that it's unsafe for cyclists. Of course, it isn't unsafe for cyclists. It is not unsafe for cyclists. 
um, uh, we do have a lot of shared use zones and I would I would like to see those increase. There are parts of the city where we could be dropping the speed limit. There are parts of the city where it might make sense uh, to input, put in wombat crossings so that you can get from the parklands to the city streets and squares easier. Um, there are many parts in the city that would benefit from a uh, inclusion of cyclists and a special button in the like cycle um, so that they don't have to meander into intersections um, to turn right with care unsafely. You know, there are lots of things that we can do which don't destroy car parking, which don't destroy businesses, which don't destroy livelihoods, uh, but still make the experience better, safer, quicker for cyclists uh, and to show that the city is welcoming towards them. That's what I think this is going to achieve. Um, I'm really interested to see what comes back. Um, uh, obviously, I'll say here and now, I'm not going to support uh, mass destruction of on-street car parking as other councillors have supported in the past. I don't think that's the way to go because at the end of the day, how are you supposed to uh, support your businesses, pay to clean your streets and do all the other things we need to do if you're scaring away small businesses from the city and if you're not collecting the on-street parking revenue? Thank I do commend this motion, uh, but that endorsement comes with that caveat. Members, Councillor Donovan and then Councillor Mackey. Just a question first, uh, Lord Mayor. Um, the city access strategy, when are we anticipating receipt of that? Acting C. Uh, thank you uh, through the uh, presiding member. Um, it's not too far away. We'd be hoping to be able to bring something um, on the public agenda into council in the next couple of months. And will that include a um, action plan within the strategy? Acting C. Uh, thank you through the chair. Um, certainly the draft city access plan um, at this stage does contain um, a range of different actions associated with a broad range of uh, transport um, transport initiatives. And uh, just finally, um, some time ago, the state government announced four key um, transport related projects that they were going to fast track and get started on some investigation. One of those was a CBD bike network and that the details of that have been publicly announced and, and broadly speaking, it was to review previous studies and investigations and relevant outputs of the strategy, identify short, medium and longer term initiatives develop an action plan for priority initiatives and preparation of high level costs to progress priority initiatives. So that was publicly announced by the state government within the four priorities that were announced. When would we be expecting that that would be available? That was along with the, the other three projects that have been publicly announced to I be fast tracked. Wasn't didn't believe they, anything had been public announced yet. Yep, they've been seen. Uh, thank you. Through the presiding member, um, is this in relation to um, city projects or these state announced projects? The state, the state announced projects. So there were the four oh, uh, state announced projects. Okay, I'm not across the, the details, councillor, so um, I need to take that on notice. Okay. Um, okay, no problem. Well, I certainly commence, uh, commend Councillor Canal for recently purchasing a bike and for, uh, for getting out there and, uh, and checking out the city streets. And I know in a conversation that we have had, he has mentioned that it's a pretty hair-raising process to, uh, to ride through the city streets in certain parts. And so I um, absolutely commend him on, uh, on doing that and on recognising the importance of uh, enabling choice for people on bikes as well as ensuring that uh, other forms of transport are considered. The, uh, the problem that I have with this, of course, is not the essence of the motion, but the fact that we have had so many motions and strategies prepared previously. And when it actually comes down to the tough decisions, that's when we have failed. And that, that uh, was recently indicated by the millions of dollars that we handed back to the state government to actually get on with delivering on one of the strategic projects that had been identified previously. Um, just to, uh, to speak to some of the other comments that have come up already within the debate, 
Um, Councillor uh, Hyde mentioned certain advocates within administration pushing their own agenda. They're called transport planners and uh, they have tertiary qualifications in what they do and they have many years and experience in, uh, in delivering transport plans. So, so that's where those transport planners Ooh, that we rely upon provide us with evidence-based recommendations. And of course, we know again from research that the two most effective ways of enabling people to have choice is separated bikeways and decreasing the speed environment. So of course we would anticipate that they would come out in the, the infrastructure strategic action plan. So I uh, absolutely support the motion and hope that when we get to actually decision making on uh, enacting the action plan that it doesn't once again fall victim to people who do not have the expertise and experience you, to uh, make evidence-based decisions. Councillor Murky. Uh, <clears throat> thanks Lord Mayor. I'm, I'm rising to support Councillor uh, Canole's motion and uh, I guess just to pick up on um, Councillor Donovan's comment, um, Franz, um, uh, respect for having got on your bike, as it were, a couple of weeks ago and started a braver journey than I'm willing to make into the heart of the city during peak uh, peak uh, business hours. But um, I, I certainly wish you safe safe travel and, and dare I say it, one, you know, one of the reasons that I hesitated to cycle for many, many years, in fact, I, I lent my, my bike to uh, uh, J.M. Katsia, the double book, two-time Booker Prize winning. Councillor um, Mackey, I order. need you to talk to the motion. Yeah, I, there, there is a method to my madness, Lord Mayor, if you'll just allow me a little bit of storytelling. Um, uh, and um, on the back of borrowing my bike, this two-time Booker Prize winning, multiple award winning uh, literary writer chose Adelaide as his home, uh, and it has been his home ever since. Um, I, I think that uh, uh, I would like, I'm not going to suggest a, a, an amendment or a, or a variation, but I would hope that the administration in preparing a cycling in infrastructure strategic action plan would also give consideration to the proposal that was put forward in the last 12 months for a rainbow um, uh, route uh, through the parklands. Uh, um, the idea of a cycling route uh, I think would be completely compatible and consistent with Councillor Canole's uh, stated intention and I'm happy to support the motion. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Hyde has left the chamber. Councillor uh, Martin, did you wish to speak? Uh, uh, yes, he did. That's all right. Yeah, thank you. Um, look, uh, Lord Mayor, I, I would like to support this. Um, I'm having some difficulty in wrestling with the notion that the very people who actually just a matter of weeks ago voted down the East-West Bikeway, which was one of the central pieces of the puzzle about bike movements in the city, North, South, East, West, and then a significant plan that we must all remember and perhaps refer to, uh, prepared by Jan Gell, um, which detailed bikeways and uh, possible routes through the city uh, as far back as 20, 2011. Now, um, having a report is a good idea. Um, having a blueprint is a good idea. But in the end, you still have to build a bikeway. Um, you know, a report is a nice warm feeling and I'm happy to help Councillor uh, Canole have that nice warm feeling about advocating for bicycles. But you just can't vote down a significant project as Team Adelaide did with the East West Bike Way. It was fully funded, fully funded. Uh, half the money provided by the state government, council to provide the other half. And, and yet we, we blew it. Um, we actually said to the government, on your bike. And frankly, I don't ever see them coming back. Um, the word I hear from North Terrace is that they're quite disappointed that this council can't be trusted as a partner in enterprises such as bikeways. Oh, However, Councillor Martin, I, I think you words. should withdraw that remark because I don't believe yeah. members. I'm speaking to Councillor Martin. Thank oh, you. I actually want to know that person um, if he wants to make a bold statement. Councillor, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Martin, yes, I okay. think I don't believe that is true, and I think that you should withdraw that remark. With, uh, which remark? Yeah. 
No, no, sorry. I'm, I'm okay. Members, oh, don't. Sorry, just don't. You know what remark I'm speaking no, no, to no, about. I, the I, state government has not lost faith in us, and they, you know, we actually are still negotiating with them around cycling infrastructure. So, if I could ask you to please speak to the motion before you. We are not talking about the decision on the east-west bikeway. We are talking about whether we want to go ahead with a report on a strategic action plan for cycling infrastructure. You know, that's that's the entire point that I've been making for the time I've been on my feet. Why would we commission a report? And I will support it because I, I believe in giving uh, warm feelings to Councillor Cadol. Um, I will support this, but when it actually came to deliver cycling infrastructure, sordidly, grubbly, we just squibbed it. It was a massive failure of leadership. And this, uh, this is a substitute for action. It is just more talk and, and uh, more expense. $422,000 is what we spent on work on the East-West Bikeway. And here it is again. Let's just have another report, more expense. Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I was gonna speak to this, but by some of the comments, it's just downright terrible that, you know, to, it just astounds me how it's continually played in this chamber and twisted and turned and you know to their own personal benefits sorry i will talk to the motion in regards to the east west because it has been brought up so I, I understand that we're not this is not part of the motion you know we consulted on it at the end of the day uh, there was a clear outcome from the ratepayers on that street how they felt about that part of council of knoll's um, motion is actually bringing people on a journey and if you want to talk about lack of leadership is shoving someone some shoving an idea down someone's throat it's not leadership you need to bring them onto a journey and and buy into the idea of having a cycle network into the city we haven't done that we, we only consulted on bikeways once once we in this whole time that you talk we talked about the east west we only consulted on it once that that we asked for in this council we need to talk about it a lot point, point, point of order lord mayor that's just not correct we consulted on the east west bikeway many times could the administration please it was in correct the report that? where we said it's only report. consulted once it was in the report yeah, but you said it wasn't consulted at all i said once could the i said members once. members no, it if you're going to bring a point of order, then you need a point of order. Deputy so Lord Mayor, the report, have a minute, the and report a half did state it was this term of council that we were the only consultation that had taken place over a bikeway. We need to bring people on a journey. We need to make a cycle network happen. And whether it's going to be in the citywide act strategy, whether it's going to be in the previous motion brought up by councillor making a report, or either way, we need to start having those discussions and we need to have them with the public as well. So I commend councillor Knoll for bringing forward um, some deeper discussions that we need to have overall for our city. Um, and uh, you know, hopefully we can have a lot more of these discussions with the public about the benefits of increasing a cycle, cycle network within the city and not have a negative outcome from a consultation. Uh, Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, just to correct a few um, uh, misconceptions. We spent $400,000 consulting on this one and we also consulted on Sturt Street. Sorry, sorry, just for clarification, Councillor, we didn't spend 400,000 on consulting. We spent a lot though. Um, I don't have it to hand, but could you stop that for a second? Thank you. If I could just get the... So 31,700 was the amount spent on the consulting out of the 400. Thank you, Councillor. Substantial amount. Uh, since I've been here, we've built Sturt Street uh, bikeway. Uh, we consulted extensively on that. We pulled it out. We've done a couple of frame roads. We consulted extensively on that. Um, two iterations of that. Um, I am just uh, of the opinion that this is just um, to make sure that uh, Team Adler goes to the next election with something on bikes. I know, as much as I stand here, that there's not one person in Team Adelaide that will vote for any bike cars because it will necessitate cars. You've heard Councillor Hyde 
he will support this, but not if any car parts. It will always necessitate car parts being taken. The only way that one can uh, put a dedicated bikeway through the city is to consult to see that you can make it as appealing to the businesses um, and try to um, get them to understand what Helen said, because they certainly don't understand that. Uh, and then really make an executive decision and push it through, because you are never, ever going to get a consultation that has um, even over 50% people wanting one because they're frightened of them. They lose car parks um, and they see them as a negative. So council has to be brave. Um, this council has shown that it isn't brave in actually doing anything. And to, I think the amount spent on the, um, what maybe just not in consultation, was over $400,000. Um, and it was voted out, and I voted it out too. Um, I think that um, the only way that a, car, a dedicated bikeways and safer bike infrastructure is this is a different composition of council. Um, with this council, it, there will never be um, infrastructure. I think it's rather sweet that everybody's congratulating France. He finally bought a bike, for God's sake. Um, what a shame we didn't do that about a month ago. Um, this team will never, ever vote for one Councillor e Moran, extra are you bike part, in, my, in my opinion. Um, and this is a waste of money. I feel sorry for Helen. She's been dudded at every turn. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Yeah. Members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Cronall to sum up. I'll just do this in dot points, but uh, I recall that our last uh, motion on bikes had an eight, uh, it was eight against and three four. So again, um, don't let bast everybody, um, you know, when, when it uh, also includes some of you. Um, I mean, I, a few of the points, Adelaide is a destination and that's pure and simple for me first because it's about bringing people into the city. I see all these things around us, you know, so it is important that we do link up with all the others. I mean, I talk about uh, uh, when I started to think about riding, and let's clarify this. I feel quite happy in the city. There's lots of good streets. Um, it's just that when you th have the thought of riding in the town, you have the apprehension. But there are things that we can do through this uh, particular action plan, and that's what this is about, not just about another talk fest. It's, it's up to us to start to put things in place. And a lot of it can be quite easy. So let's not forget that. It's not about uh, cutting off streets. It's not about doing only separated bikeways. We have lanes that have no traffic and we can easily access those and link them with a, a, you know, suburbs outside us without having to disturb anything. There are simple practical things that we can do to show that these, these laneways or these, these ways of getting in the city are you know, not going to intrude and destroy business. we just got to do it in an intelligent way and these argumentative things certainly don't uh, do that. Um, it is about working with all the stakeholders. It is about the people that you're going to be impacting. But if we do the smart things first, it'll be the people that will benefit you'll talk to first and they will be able to interact to how you can be, uh, get them through the parklands towards the city and how we are in an intelligent way of enabling them certainly Parklands, trail, all that, that can be part of, you know, the stepping stones for doing something bigger, but at least we're doing it in a real structured way because so far it's just been simple projects, you know, quick announcements, and uh, you, this is the problems that you get because you're impacting people in the wrong way. You're telling them what you want them to do. Um, we can build this in segments. So this will be so that we can pick out simple projects, one, and they can also be, uh, we can also ask for funding for these things. So we can get a support because we really have a package of things that we can deliver that is not going to be uh, in an uh, argumentative stuff that uh, a few of you really do enjoy and sadly we have to listen to it. Um, and uh, uh, we can link them, uh, you know, we can link multiple terms of council with this because the objective here is that if we're doing this properly, you'll have the people on board that are going to be benefit from it and mitigate any, any issues for people that are going to be impacted by it. And you can then say from council to council, we can afford this much and you can start to do things. These really big projects mean it's big steps. And in, in times that we've had with COVID or whatever, we do have to do this a little bit carefully, but if we've got the plan in place and we can create surplus and things like that, we can put these things in place and make them work and just start to show that we have an alternative way to get to town. And it's not just cycling, it's also the buses and all those things. We need to do that as well. And, and I do trust that we as councillors will make good decisions because it's, it is the majority of us and a few of you just have a problem with it. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Members to the vote, those in favour? 
Those against? Division's been called. Council members, the division has been called. All those in favour of the motion, please stand, remain standing for all names have been called. Councillor Mackey, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Carer, Councillor Ho, Councillor Canole, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Abraham today and Councillor Martin. Uh, members, I'm going to call a short break. I know we only have um, six motions left, but I do need to have a short break. Um, so let's say, um, what is it now? Uh, so 10 past, 20 minutes, thank you.
Uh, thank you, members. 17.5, Deputy Lord Mayor, motion or notice, review of greening policy. Thank you, um, uh, Lord Mayor. Um, seeking a seconder, I take it as read. Seeking a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Um, similar to the other motion, this is a workshop. I'm not asking to spend any money, it's just a workshop. So let's get that very clear. Um, so it's I understand that it's really got a second. <laughs> I understand that it's a, a, a passion of uh, all of ours to have our students uh, looking very green. Um, it's very important to us as a council. We have a policy um, that, uh, that we have in regards to it. And what I'm asking is to bring that policy in um, to to be reviewed. And I've also uh, made mention of councillor, uh, former councillor Abbeyard's motion back on 12th March 2019, just asking for uh, and details regarding the increase of the canopy in regards to the southwest um, corner of the, of the city. Um, so we're wanting to uh, a review on that. Um, I'm hoping that by having this workshop, um, that we'll be able to discuss um, between us, uh, the, what we find important and what we should further enhance and green within our city. Um, we um, love to be able to work with this council to discuss uh, any extra work that's needed. As we know, it is an economic benefit to our city. It's an environmental benefit. Um, it promotes health and well-being, um, increases visitors to the city, um, increases home prices, rental rates, um, business opportunities, and the list goes on. Um, so I'm just bringing this matter forward to us as elected members to have a workshop on. Thank you. Councillor Kamal, did you wish to speak? Councillor Abraham today. <coughs> Thank you, Lord Mayor. I do have a, uh, an amendment which is essentially adding um, point four, um, um, and, and in that point, Lord Mayor, I want to um, focus on uh, the northwest of the CBD, and I'll um, actually hand a second of that. Or if yes, the amendment. So, did I have a seconder? I'm sorry, thank you, Councillor Ho. So you may speak to it, Councillor Abrams. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, Lord Mayor, I'll, I'll be brief. Uh, since the since the elections, I have been working with uh, with our administration on uh, uh, focusing on our greening efforts in the northwestern corner of the CBD. Um, uh, for, for members, that is essentially from uh, North Terrace to West Terrace to roughly Guja, Grove Street to Morford Street. That block uh, was essentially my uh, my neighbourhood. Um, I took a lot of uh, a lot of feedback from the local residents and traders, and one of the things that was constantly mentioned uh, was uh, the greening that was needed, uh, in particular to to um, the side streets that connected all the main streets. Uh, so I'd like that to be included in this motion. I do think it's a, it's a good motion, and I'd like us to workshop any uh, greening opportunities that we see in that corner of the CBD. Okay, Councillor Ho, did you wish to speak? Members? If there's no other speakers, I'll go back to Councillor Abraham today to sum up. Sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried, that becomes a substantive. Um, does anyone to speak to it? If not, I'll go back to Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Deputy Lord Mayor? No. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. <coughs> Um, that takes us to 17.6, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, Culture Report. Hands up every way. I am uh, taking the motion as read and I'm seeking a second. So, uh, Councillor Abraham said open, and I've got your hand, Councillor Martin, and yours, Councillor Hyde. No, no, Lord Mayor, I'm... Um... Uh, declaring a conflict. Yes, what's that conflict, Councillor um, Martin? I know that uh, uh, Councillor Kouros has made it clear on previous occasions it's uh, her belief that I'm the subject of this report, uh, even though we've not seen this report. Um, point and point therefore, of clarification, I have never said any such thing that you are subject to the report. Well, at the last meeting you said your behaviour is the problem. 
um, full and stop. therefore on that basis. Full stop. Thank you. Um, right. If you'd like that to state been. what your conflict of interest, thank you for your point of order. Yes, it, it is that it might be perceived that I have a conflict and shouldn't vote, uh, and therefore I will not vote on this matter, um, uh, but I will remain in the room. <coughs> So governance advice is that if you stay in your chair and in the meeting, technically you have to vote. If you want to continue with the conflict of interest, um, well, then or you can stay and vote. Well, the practice in this place has been previously, uh, Councillor Canole, quite recently, as last as recently as the last meeting, uh, declared a conflict, did not vote, remained in the room. I think the provisions of the Act that require if a member's in the meeting to vote trump whether or not you're calling a perceived conflict of interest and staying in the meeting. So you can stay in the meeting, not debate and vote, or you can declare perceived and leave, or but if you're in the meeting, you are required to vote. If you're in your chair, you need to vote. Apologies well, if, if that's, that's not being clear in the past. <clears throat> if that's the case, then I'll, uh, I'll have to leave the room. Can I ask some players to have some Thank clarification you. on that? Um, yes, in, in regards to uh, Councillor Martin declaring a conflict, I still don't understand what his basis is declaring it on. Because That's his call, unfortunately. Right. We Thank can't you. declare conflicts of interest on behalf of other members. Um, so, Deputy Lord, you're speaking to your motion. I have a second, correct? You do, and Councillor Abraham today. Uh, it's very clear um, that, uh, you know, uh, we have this, or it's been known that we have this cultural report, uh, which none of us have read, none of us uh, uh, know what's in this report. Uh, of, uh, may, we may, um, people have, uh, may have made assumptions out there in the media. Um, I can't control that, but the truth of the matter is that this report has not been read by anyone. Um, in this chamber, or uh, elected members, sorry. Um, I'm sorry, point of, point of clarification. Right, elected members. I am an elected member. Oh, sorry. I'm um, just there. reminding members by that I am an elected member. By councillors. Okay, thank you. To clarify that. Um, so uh, this motion is, is really the right for the public to know what's in the report, as do council members. Um, it, it's bringing it forward for administration to have it prepared um, and address any issues in to have this action brought to us, um, I would hope, as early as June 2021. Um, I know it doesn't say that on the motion, um, but um, do, what, do we need to add that in to June 2021? But uh, you've, does, got, you've got by the end it, of June, I think we yeah, assume that's June 21. It is in the, uh, in the uh, administration comment that it's understood that it's end of June 2021. We'll just make that slight variation so it's uh, clear. Do I have to wait for Councillor Mackey and Councillor Donovan to stop talking? Just had that added, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, to that just for clarity. So basically that is all what the motion is. Um, stating. Um, I don't want to go into any debate about the report because um, we don't know actually what the report states. Um, I'm ba basically asking what is to, for administration to do what is required to bring the report out for the public to read. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Abraham today. Is that right? Uh, Councillor Hyde, did you have your hand up to speak? No. I'm no? Sorry, apologies. Members, would anybody else like to speak to it? If not, I will go. <laughs> Councillor Donovan, and then I'll go to Councillor Hyde. Councillor Donovan. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I would be uncomfortable to support this motion in its current format, but with a minor um, variation, I'd be happy to support it, which would be uh, point four. Um, resolves that the legal practitioner present findings back to council, blah, 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 instead of final report.
It, it is different. I think that is an amendment actually, because it's a it's a different uh, it's a different request than what's on there, Councillor Donovan. You can do that, but I then I'll need a seconder for it to be an amendment, if that's what you wish. Yes. Yep. Okay. And Councillor Murphy, you want to second that? Okay, Councillor Donovan, you can speak I must, to that. I'm, I'm sorry, I must raise a point of uh, clear, a point of order here. Um, I'll just put this out there. It appears the original motion's intent was to make the report public. Uh, this entirely negates that. Um, it seems to me that this is a negative on the on the actual intent of the motion. Put it there. I don't intend it to be a negative, but without breaching confidentiality, I can't support the wording of the first suggestion. I don't think that actually, and I can't imagine a legal practitioner being able to come to such an outcome. Whereas I think if we were to broaden the wording, it would lead to a better outcome without being able to speak to why that is. Um, Councillor Mackey, did you wish to speak to it? Um, does anybody else want to speak to that amendment? If Councillor Hyde? So if we could just pause things for a moment, just a moment. I'm just going to ask the acting CE to um, just clarify some of the things in this motion before we continue. Councillor Hyde, I will come back to you um, just to make sure we're all clear. Members, if I could have your attention, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you through the chair. I think the intent of part three of the original motion is that I engage an independent legal practitioner. So my sense is that that is someone that hasn't been previously involved in the preparation of the item for noting in parts one and two. Um, and therefore, whoever I engage is to bring back whatever um, findings they have to make sure that the report can be considered on the public agenda, present those findings back. And I think that's the intent of Councillor Donovan's um, amendment. I would just point out in the admin comment that it's clear that an independent legal practitioner has already been engaged to provide advice to enable the cultural investigation report to be considered by Council on a public agenda. So that um, means now I'd be trying to hunt down in this town another independent legal practitioner because I've already engaged an independent legal practitioner. So would that help if number three said notes? Noting that you have already engaged an independent legal practitioner, we could note that the acting CEO, Councillor Donovan, and your mover, your seconder. So given that that uh, has already been done. Does that make sense? So you have to take away the word. Correct. So if we take away the word requests and we're noting that the acting CEO has already engaged an independent legal practitioner. Are we good with that? So, so four is asking that the the independent legal practitioner, the acting CEO, has engaged, presents the findings back to council on a public agenda. Um, just so that we're all clear, what is no, in? Can you just repeat that? So, the acting CEO has already engaged an independent legal practitioner, um, so that they can do what they need to to bring a report on public agenda. And number four resolves that that legal practitioner noted in three present those findings back to us. Can I talk now? Uh, you may. 
Thank you, Lord Chair. Um, yes, uh, I'm incredibly concerned about this amendment. Um, I'm concerned because the public has a right to know what is in the final report. The findings of someone else looking over that report doesn't necessarily doesn't necessarily mean um, that the report itself, itself, the data underpinning it, um, uh, you know, the, the interaction um, uh, you know, with staff in the preparation of the report. So I um, will remind councillors that the information you're discussing has only been discussed in confidence. Yes, and I'm not discussing the information. Well, you are. You're talking about things that are within the report. Well, I'm not. I haven't mentioned anything that's in the report. I haven't mentioned anything that's in the report. Um, because I can't, because I haven't seen it. And Lord Mayor, I can't mention anything that's in the report. I couldn't possibly, because I haven't seen it. Um, the public hasn't seen it. Uh, our voters haven't seen it. The media hasn't seen it. And this is very much the problem, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, to instead ask for a legal practitioner to prevent, present findings, um, uh, I think, uh, could, be, could be a way of actually burying the report. It could be a way of burying whatever is sitting in this document that I'm not aware of uh, and that other councillors in this chamber uh, are not aware of. Um, now, it, it may be the practice of some um, to look to protect their factional colleagues here in the chamber. Councillor, thank you. Is. No, like, I ask you to withdraw is. that remark, please. That is disrespectful. I would ask you to withdraw that I'm, remark. I'm not going to withdraw Lord Mayor, because I said it may be the practice of some to protect their factional colleagues. And that is what I think this is. That is what I think it could be. Honestly, Lord Mayor, and I think it is I think it is very, very concerning. Point of order, Lord Mayor. That is clearly misinformation. Uh, we have been presented with certain information based on that information that was told to us in confidence. The councillor is very clear as to why I made that change. Uh, uh, and that I'm is absolutely not. outrageous that he no, should no. try and bury that in some complete no, misinformation. Lord but Mayor, Lord Mayor if I could reclaim my time. I'm actually not clear because I think the effect of this amendment will be to bury a report which the public have a right to know about the public have a right to know how elected members are treating their employees in this chamber. Yep, sorry, I'm and going to stop you there. Thank you. Would you like to clarify some of the information that's flowing around the chamber? Uh, thank you to the presiding member. I think what I was trying to do with the help of the Lord Mayor is just um, ensure that, as my admin comment states quite clearly, I have already engaged an independent legal practitioner to provide advice to the council to enable the cultural report be considered on the public agenda of council. So the impact of the amendment as I read it from Councillor Donovan isn't to bury a report. I just need to make that clear. I'm not reading it as any intent to bury the report. Certainly, except there, there would be a difference. I mean, if there wasn't a difference, why would we have the amendment? Why wouldn't the amendment have just been ruled out as irrelevant? There is clearly a difference here. Present findings from an independent legal practitioner, which I accept the CEO has already engaged. That is different to present the final report described in the above back to council. It is different. They are different things. And because they are different things, I am saying, Lord Mayor, that I will not be voting for this because I do not want to see this report buried. I can only speculate as to the motives of some, and it is just speculation. I don't know what's in there. I can't firmly say it either way, but I am very, very suspicious that councillors would seek to not have the final report described above at items one and two brought back to council on the public agenda. And I think any act to not bring things back to council on the public agenda should be construed by the public who have a right to know uh, as something which is anti-transparent and ultimately anti-democratic. The public have a right to know how their elected members treat their staff. That's what this is about. This amendment, I think, dilutes what the Deputy Lord Mayor is trying to achieve, which is maximum transparency. I think it dilutes that. That's why I think it is a bad amendment. Uh, and I strongly urge councillors to vote against it. Councillor Mackey. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, let me make it absolutely clear, Councillor Hyde, and I will, of course, allow Councillor Donovan to speak for herself. I have no 
interest in seeing this report buried. I am absolutely committed to seeing its full release to the public. However, the motion as was constructed, having regard to the fact that the acting CEO has already engaged an independent legal practitioner, which therefore rendered the original uh, paragraph three um, redundant uh, and, and has therefore sought to change it. You know, Councillor Hyde, that we have all been privy to confidential information that I cannot, of course, go into any detail about, but that I believe makes it very, very clear that before um, the release uh, of uh, this report to the public, that we have had further opportunity for receiving of advice of a legal nature um, in order that the report can be released to the public in full. Deputy Lord Mayor. I just want to make it clear that Councillor Donovan didn't ask for the notes to be put in. It was the CEO that requested the notes to be put in. Actually, that I did. Oh, I, I, sorry, I did, Lord actually. Mayor. Yeah. So that I did not know that was currently being done. So I couldn't. That's why I asked for the requests in the original motion. But it, the way I'm reading it, it's much for muchness. It's the same thing. What I'm asking, we're not doing anything different. So it's almost like things are being twisted to in a way that I don't understand where this is going. And I'm sorry, there has to be. I'm, I'm, I would like to go to the back to previous motion. I'm happy with that. I will not be voting for this one because it's actually the same as the original motion. Well, okay. So, so my my reading of it reading. is is that we are noting because at your point three that action has already been undertaken. So we're noting that that action has been undertaken. And the difference between three and four is simply that that person that's been engaged will then present it back to us, as opposed to the acting CEO or member of council or me. That's how I read that. And I will check with the acting CEO if that's how she reads that. So that would be presented back to us by the legal practitioner. Okay, well, I take it then that um, the only difference is that we're asking for a legal practitioner to be present in Correct. presenting the report. That is how I read it. That's not, that is not what it says. It is nowhere saying this amended motion. Sorry, point of order just on that. Nowhere in this does, amended motion does it say that the final report will be. The words final report are struck out. They are struck out because this motion does not specifically say that this final report oh. comes back to us. Okay. They right. are thank you, 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 Councillor Hyde. Thank you. Yeah, actually, it's Councillor amazing. Hyde. I think you're actually all trying to achieve the same thing. I don't think no. we are. So, no, we are not. Uh, no, um, actually, we will take the amendment through. You've spoken to the amendment, members. Okay, uh, and again, a comment from the acting CEO that we actually need to use the correct title of the report. So in uh, the in point one, it needs to be the cultural investigation report, and in point three, it needs to be the cultural investigation report. Investigation report. And so I'll just go, because we're in the amendment, I'll just check, thank you, mover and seconder, that we actually make sure we are using the correct uh, title. Um, we'll go back to it. Uh, I guess, so So what I'm hearing is the difference between the actual report coming in and a legal petitioner presenting findings, which may be different. Yeah. So on that point, if there's no further speakers, I will go back to Councillor Donovan. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, where to begin? Uh, without breaching any confidentiality, to reassure my colleagues and also to um, further cement the idea, the wording of the initial motion refers to a report. 
So the rationale behind two, I should say, to our final report or the final report, whatever it was. So the rationale of my amendment is without breaching any confidentiality relating to information that only we are privy to that clearly shows that what we need to consider and what would only be fair in terms of presenting information publicly based on the information that we have received thus far would be to ensure that the array of information is considered. Hence to suggest that we consider the final report would be a, um, a, a potential for there to be um, information put into the public realm that would not provide all of the information that has been presented to us thus far. So this is where thank, thank the you. legal yeah. findings are a way of ensuring that we get all of the information out. This would be by far the more transparent way of acting. Um, thank you, Councillor Donovan. Uh, members, we're going to vote on the amendment. Those in favour, those against. So that is lost. Council members, the division has been called on the amendment. All those in favour, please stand and remain standing to all notes have been called. Councillor Mackey, Councillor Donovan. And if we can go back to the original motion and also make the Thank you. Um, Deputy Lord Mayor, are you happy if I still leave notes and the investigation? Thank you. Um, question, Councillor Hyde. Forgive me, I don't have the administration comment in front of me, but the way that three originally read um, was that Council would be requesting further action to be taken. So, um, can I just clarify, it's clearly in my mind that the CEO is already taking that action and thus her actions to date and the actions that will follow are consistent with what we were requesting at three anyway. Acting CEO. Um, yes, that is correct. The reason why I then um, suggested that Paul be clarified was because that amendment started to contradict what I um, the, the previous three. Right, understood. Thank you, Councillor Kerr. Uh, Lord Mayor, I look. Um, I support the motion. I think uh, it's my reading that actually um, this motion, as it is, does allow the acting CEO uh, to uh, retain the report and not present it to council if it is the case uh, that the report is not suitable uh, for consideration on the public agenda of council. I say this. Um, that's my reading of it. Um, I say this uh, only as an assurance, I think, to other, counts, other councillors, um, that the intent of the motion uh, to make this public uh, is not obviated, it's not destroyed, uh, because there may be an issue uh, with a, um, a, a, a flaw in the report Councillor. such that it shouldn't be made public, if that makes sense. Um, so I, I do support the motion. I say to councillors who are wavering because of the arguments in favour of the amendment, um, I think you should support this because, in my reading, uh, it does allow the CEO discretion here. Um, if the report's not suitable, so be it. But at the moment, I think the intention should be supported. Uh, as Councillor Hyde said, this ought to be in the public uh, domain. Members, any other speak? You've already spoken to it, Councillor Hyde. Uh, I'm sorry, apologies. I need to be amendment. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, just to recap on what we know and can talk about. Um, this report was requested by the Deputy Lord Mayor and I um, over just over 12 months ago now because we had identified what we believe was behaviour um, uh, which was uh, not good behaviour and that that behaviour was directed towards our employees. Now we said at the time, and I said at the time, that um, councillors sign up for a little bit of political argy-bargy the staff, however, do not. Um, even though we only employ the CEO directly, um, we still, in my view, have a duty of care to the rest of the staff that we employ. Um, 
and seeing some of the treatment of them has been heartbreaking, to say the least. Absolutely heartbreaking, Lord Mayor. Um, our staff, even if we disagree with them from time to time, they come in, they do their job to the very, very best of their ability, given the sometimes schizophrenic direction of the council chamber, um, and they do not deserve to be treated how the Deputy Lord Mayor and myself and other colleagues have observed. That is effectively, effectively what this is about. Now, um, yes, you, you know, there are, there are bits and pieces that we've picked up along the way regarding this, but again, to recap of what we know um, and what we can talk about, I would observe that there are two councillors outside the room. I will not make any other observations. Um, and I would observe that other councillors have put an amendment that would have effectively led to the report potentially, well, it would have excluded the final report being released. And I don't think that's good. I don't think, I think our staff deserve better. I think our staff deserve to be heard. Um, I think any bad behaviour that may or may not be present um, regard, with regards to how councillors have treated our staff should be aired, and it should be aired publicly. I mean, Councillor Mackey brings a motion earlier to talk about historic, we'll go back through 10 years to look at complaints. But what? But suddenly we don't want to release a report that goes back two years to look at issues of harassment um, from elected members to staff. So um, I think absolutely this report should be brought back. It should be brought back on the public agenda. Um, and also because our ratepayers have a right to know as well. Our staff deserve closure of this matter um, and our ratepayers deserve to know how their elected members that they put into office the ones of us who are, of course, left from the general election, but even the ones from by-elections as well, they deserve to know how the people that they vote in decide to spend their time and the manner with which they conduct themselves when it comes to treating people um, who, uh, for, want of a, for want of a more apt and, um, uh, apt and accurate description, are effectively below them in the hierarchy of authority here in the city of Adelaide. Ratepayers have a right to know and staff deserve to have closure on this matter. Councillor Mackey. Uh, Lord Mayor, once oh, again. No, sorry, you seconded the amendment, so you can't speak to it. Are we still talking to the amendment? No, no. Oh, because you seconded the, the amendment. In seconding the motion, you're taking to have spoken to the. In second, sorry, in seconding the amendment, you've taken to have spoken to the motion, so you can't speak again. Well, then, Lord Mayor, as a point of order, as a point of order, I, I would like to um, make very, very clear that Councillor Hyde's impugning of the, my motive in regard to that amendment that has been lost and we've moved on is, in fact, false and misleading. And I make it very, very clear that I support the final Thank you. That's, thank you, Councillor Mackey. You all use point of order incorrectly. It's, if you want to clarify something, that is fine. You can actually go back and clarify what somebody has said. Um, so that you can actually call attention to um, use of words by another member. But okay, members, um, Deputy Lord Mayor, would you like to sum up? Firstly, um, Lord Mayor, I'd like to um, thank Councillor Hyde for pointing out that the amendment was completely different and it wouldn't have allowed for the report to actually have been brought out to the public. Um, doing it this way um, brings the whole report out, not just what the legal practitioner engaged thinks is fair to bring out to the public. This is having everything out transparent as whole and ending this discussion and not lingering to what more could, was in that report that wasn't um, for the, there for the public to see. Um, it, is, it is about um, this, this culture that we have. It's a culture that's been embedded uh, in, this, uh, in this council for a very long time and it needs to stop. And we need to be very respectful to all our employees and elected members that does not give us the right to um, uh, treat anyone differently. So it will be 
great to have this report out for transparency. It would be great to um, actually read it and know what is actually being um, the viewpoint of administration. It would be fantastic to be able to listen and read what they say to implement different procedures that we may need to change within the council because of elected members' behaviours. Um, and um, I look forward to, uh, to that day. Members, to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, it's carried unanimously, could be recorded as such. And councillor's not present, that's just recorded. That's recorded in the minutes. Um, members, oh, actually, we'll just get uh, the councillors, Martin and Moran. I'm not sure if councillor Moran's still here, actually. <laughs> Councillor Martin, we're on 17.7, .7, which is your motion, um, audit committee advice. Can I just have a moment? Please? Yes, absolutely. Um, I, I move as printed, Lord Mayor. And look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Um, Lord Mayor, this council asked our audit committee to approve a budget and a long-term financial plan for public consultation. And then after getting uh, their approval, that is the audit committee's approval, this council, um, through motions on notice put by Councillor Hyde on the 13th of April and supported by the majority faction, um, the elected body told the administration to just change the budget uh, substantially. Um, now, the external auditor has already been asked to provide uh, clarity on one issue raised at that April 13th meeting, and I'm asking that the others identified in this motion tonight ought to be reviewed also. Uh, those decisions, and I'm referring to the, uh, the minuted decisions, were item 17.14, the city intends to keep the current aquatic centre functioning while a new centre is constructed on condition the city has a viable model substantial enough to construct a new centre by June next year. So June next year is the deadline and uh, some important works identified in the asset management plan totaling 10 to 15 million dollars will be removed from consequent impacts uh, on the centre um, uh, to continue operating if, if that, uh, that is the case. Now, that's certainly not something that's disclosed in the budget documents. 17.15, the $50 million replacement of the Rundle U Park has been removed from the long-term financial plan and from borrowings on the basis of some joint venture with a party not yet known in a deal not adequately described with costs, any lost income and any other consideration apparent. Uh, effectively, it's being put in the drawer for another day. 17.16, uh, the administration's <coughs> forecast operating deficit for the coming year of almost $5 million was without reference to any plan of consequence that would support the possibility, just, just abolish the, uh, the whole deficit on the night. 17.18, uh, assets. Um, it was agreed that the Piri Street car park, which features prominently in the proceeds of asset sales calculations in the long-term financial plan, will continue to provide millions of dollars in income every year of the next decade on the basis that council might be able to negotiate the sale of the asset in a manner where we get the value of the asset and also the income we currently receive from some party which hasn't been identified. Now, the, the, the effect of these motions, and there were other impacts, Lord Mayor, was that through a vote, uh, Councillor Hyde and the majority of council um, reduced $150 million from our forecast borrowings. There was no research from property consultants, nor any external parties, no modelling from finance, and no substantial input from administration. Now, this motion tonight, and may I have five seconds more, Lord Mayor? Five seconds. Thank you. Um, and I will be copying these notes to the audit committee and external auditors, but this note asks for approval for that process to happen by a vote of council. I think that protects our reputation. 
of course, if council doesn't wish to support it, that's fine. Uh, Councillor Moran, has a second did you wish to speak? Uh, no, I think uh, Councillor has uh, said it all. I'm absolutely shocked and uh, and disgusted by what has happened here. Uh, and I think the putting aside of the um, time. Sorry, you are speaking. You are speaking. Uh, speaking. Uh, time honoured uh, protocol, which was very sensible. That um, without notice, motions and amendments on council involving substantial amounts of money were to be put on notice. And I know you, Lord Mayor, yourself have been very strict in the past council and this council about that. But it seems that our budget was completely slashed and changed in the early hours of the morning with um, amendments that weren't on notice. Council Moran, all those motions were on notice? The amendments were not on my notice. There were no amendments. No, they were on notice. They were on Well, it's a substantial change to what we were see, we looked at in the committee. And to have these changes put in at that time of night is it, without, with a very little administration comment and no checks and balances. I've never seen that before. And I understand that the audit committee is quite upset about it. Ah. Um, members, would anybody else like to speak? Yeah. Councillor Hyde? <laughs> Um, again, where to begin? Um, so what Councillor Martin didn't highlight is that his, all the points he's made in his address and in this motion, what have you, have all been put to the administration. He just didn't like the answers they came back to him with. He put all the questions to them, he put all the points to them, and now uh, well, he actually, after that, then went to seek a second opinion, um, unsatisfied with the responses of our highly skilled staff. That second opinion um, was sought from the audit committee, whom he took it upon himself to engage um, privately, which is fine for a councillor to email the independent members of the audit committee, of course, excluding you and I, Lord Mayor, we weren't aware of the correspondence. Um, and Councillor Martin put the same points to them. And again, they brought it up doing their due diligence in the audit committee, um, and they asked questions about it. Um, and the advice uh, that was provided didn't change the recommendation that came. There was no further advice provided by the audit committee, and the minutes are, are actually in this agenda for councillors to peruse. Um, and so, having first not got the answer he wanted, and the answer, of course, was that oh, this is this is awful. This is highly irregular, and what have you. Well, it is irregular for councillors to take a proactive role in financial management, um, perhaps in this place. But that's effectively what we've done, Lord Mayor. Um, and so first time didn't get the answer he wanted. Second time didn't get the answer he wanted because we're in the independent audit committee. And so third time lucky, hopefully, third time's charm. Um, even though the administration who do their due diligence, um, who provided very thorough administrative comment to Councillor Moran's point, who I actually worked with um, hand in glove on the ideas that I brought forward, um, uh, the administration who had already decided that they would be getting, as they should do, external auditors to look over this, um, uh, Councillor Martin is incredibly desperate to seek that third opinion, that third opinion, scraping and scrounging around to try and get someone to say, to try and get someone to say that all those things that the council did, which had the benefit of administrative comment, which have improved the budget bottom line by $150 million, that all those things were wrong. Now, Councillor Martin is entitled to say that they are wrong. Um, and I am entitled to say that I think he's that I think he does not like them because they have absolutely, absolutely destroyed the political argument that he is making. And I think that's why he doesn't like them. Now, Lord Mayor, if I could just very quickly run through. Um, uh, Councillor Martin has represented these changes to the long-term financial plan and what have you as mere uh, you know, lines on a bit of paper, a bit of pencil and eraser, scrub it out and start again. Well, in actual fact, when you're dealing with, when you're assuming that you're going to spend $50 million replacing a concrete and steel car park and you're changing that assumption, you're actually changing uh, very, very hard, hard uh, uh, building materials. You are changing the reality of what the city is spending its money for. Just have one more minute. Members. Thank you. You're very much, you're very much changing um, tangible things that are going to happen or not going to happen or are going to happen differently in the city. It's the same with the aquatic centre when councillors resolved that, hang on a minute, we're actually not going to keep throwing a capital expenditure after an ailing and decrepit asset. 
Um, it's the same when we talk about, and let's just be clear, what this council said about Piri Street, what this council said about Piri Street is that uh, we do not want to sell the car park because it generates revenue. If you can sell the air rights above the car park and maintain the car park there, that's fantastic. And it's on that basis that, um, uh, that those proceeds are left in the future fund. Uh, but we also said, you can sell the car park only if you enter uh, an arrangement through which to recoup the revenue. That's what we said. And that is why all those assumptions are there in the long-term financial plan. We gave them three options, three options. And yes, we're yet to, uh, to commence the EOI and see what comes back from that. I just have 30 seconds more. We're yet to commence the EOI and see what I comes do need back a show of that. hands if we're going to allow more time and at least 30 um, seconds. Thank you. But, uh, but again, very real things. This is infrastructure. These are, these are otherwise uh, rather silly assumptions in the long term financial plan that we're dealing with and getting rid of. Um, and the fact that council is able to make some decisions now and reduce its debt by $150 million in 10 years time, I think speaks volumes about this council chamber that, that we are on the ball that we've identified a problem and that we're taking proactive action to fix it. And if other councillors are unhappy that that ruins their political line, well, so be it. But I'm not here to indulge them. I'm here to serve the ratepayers. Oh. Anyway. Um, members, would anybody else like to speak to the motion? If not, I'll go to Councillor Martin to, uh, to sum up. Thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Look, uh, Councillor Hyde is eloquent as always, um, almost as good as the creativity that's gone into these uh, solutions. Um, they are not as they seem. Uh, the, uh, the Rundle car park is completely removed from um, both, and I'm reading from the minutes here, is completely removed from the asset manage management plan and the long-term financial plan. It doesn't assume that there's going to be a sale, air rights, or any other deal at any other time simply says that at some stage in the future, um, we will um, look to a, a deal with a party not identified, such as with the, uh, the central market arcade uh, with the recent air rights deal. Now, that's a grand plan. Uh, I remind everyone, the central market arcade redevelopment is costing us $54 million. We are point of order, <laughs> Councillor Martin. It is okay, not costing Lord us Mayor, it is costing us twenty seven point four million dollars and the contract, plus one point three in contingency. Oh look, Lord Mayor, I am so tired of having to deal with your misrepresentation. I'm sorry, but Councillor I, Martin, I'm tired Lord of dealing Mayor, with your misrepresentation. We are All right, all right, Lord Mayor. I accept that. The contract you signed for the Central Market Arcade lists construction costs as $54 million. There's $3 million of contingency money. There is a $27 million payment coming for air rights. It is $54 million to build that project. Now, whether there are air rights or not involved in the deal, that is the cost. Sorry, a right. point of clarification, Councillor Mart said a $27 million payment coming from air rights. Payment implies money is changing hands. Money is not changing hands. And that's an excellent point. And I, I do expect to ask a question on notice in relation to the treatment of that, because as I understand it, it doesn't appear in our books. $27 million changes hands. I'd like to know where it is. Nevertheless, nor does it include, as with the Central Market Arcade, lost revenue for a period of four years or more. Three million dollars a year in lost income coming as a consequence of that development. Sorry, Lord Mayor, point no of clarification. Such, it no actually such does calculation. include the removal of no such from calculation the has been made. And look, I'm just sick of the interruptions. No such calculation has been made in respect of the Rundle Street car park. That's how wacky, that's how wacky. Lord it Mayor, goes. yes, it has. It has been removed in the latter years. It has it not. Been. It has. Okay. In respect of the uh, the car park on uh, Peary and Flinders, the resolution of the council was to leave the asset in there, the asset sale in our long-term financial plan, along with the income, even after we've sold it, on the basis that we can get full value for the asset and we will be paid the income we currently receive for the next decade. It is creativity and it should be looked at. And if, as Councillor Hyde says, there is no problem with this, that these are all legitimate and reasonable tactics and measures to be taken by the council, 
then there is nothing for anyone to be concerned about. The oh. external auditors will give it the tick and will say to council, well done. And indeed, I expect to see all of the councillors vote for this because they will exhibit their trust in all of the measures that Councillor Hyde has taken by supporting its examination by the audit committee and by the external auditors. Members, you have the opportunity to put your money where your mouth is. Vote for this. If you don't, we know exactly what's going on. Members, on that note. <laughs> sorry. No, no, you can't speak. I'm sorry. Members, to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? There that is lost. Members, that takes us to 17.8, which Councillor Martin released draft master plan North Adelaide Golf Course. Um, I'll, um, I'll withdraw that a little bit. Withdraw. Thank you, Councillor Martin. 17.9 um, is the uh, Councillor Martin greening of Travers Place. Yep. Okay. Um, I, uh, I move as printed, Lord Mayor. Okay, and uh, thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. We'll second. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Deputy Look, I'm, yep. I'm uh, hoping uh, for the residents of Travis Place at North Adelaide that Team Adelaide will be more accommodating on this occasion. Um, for those who have not visited Travis Place, um, it is uh, devoid of vegetation, not unlike the areas that uh, Councillor Abraham today has made his, uh, his personal crusade. Um, it is um, bordered by green only within uh, property boundaries, not on the street. And, and ironically, the street entrance itself is bathed in green as a consequence of all of the, uh, the canopy established on Barton Terrace. Um, it is, uh, as the administration identifies, a very narrow street. Um, it will be, I accept, difficult to green, uh -huh. um, not unlike the task that confronted Council some years ago with Hack Street, uh, which is nearby and which was uh, successfully green to the extent that it could be. Um, the request of the ratepayers is that we investigate and plant whatever we can uh, in this otherwise stark environment. Um, I don't anticipate, as I said, there will be many trees. I understand the issues involved, but uh, for us um, to ask the administration um, to, through existing budgets, not additional expenditure, through additional um, uh, investigation, look at how we can green this street and the extent to which we can green that, then the residents will be uh, very grateful indeed. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to it? Only that uh, I support the motion um, and, and the fact that uh, it is in line with uh, the greening policy for we, we all want to see our streets clean, uh, green. Um, obviously, um, as stated, this report will put the investigation, the, the costings will be brought back into council. Correct. Um, so I look forward to seeing what can be done. Um, so just for clarity, in the administration co comment, uh, there will a report be coming back to Council by December 21. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Members, would anyone else like to speak to it? If not, I'll go back to the move to sum up. Um, yes, Lord Mayor, look, um, I note that that uh, comment is there from the administration. Um, it doesn't really require a report back to Council. It is simply asking that the petition has been received and we ask the administration uh, to include the planning selection and uh, planting of the optimum number of trees in Travis Place. Now, the street is uh, not much bigger than the length of this room, and if it amounted to five or ten trees, I'd be very surprised. And on that basis, I just don't see any point in bringing a, a report back to us. Uh, if the administration decides it can't be done, it can't be done. If the administration decides it can plant two, four, six trees, then that's certainly, uh, I would have thought, within its delegation. Um, and the cost, frankly, um, uh, is not going to be great because I don't anticipate excavation of any substantial nature involving services. Otherwise, it just wouldn't be possible. It wouldn't be worthwhile. Um, so I ask the administration that they undertake the task uh, to the best of their ability. And if um, they achieve what they can, then that's a reasonable outcome for the ratepayers. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. That was unanimous. It'll be recorded as unanimous.
Um, okay. Um, 7.10, Councillor Martin, Council Assets and Elected Members Staff. Councillor Connell. Yeah. Um, uh, for this motion, I've received a conflict of interest, but it is well known that I have businesses that are in the central market. Uh, they obviously have a, a lease relationship with the, uh, with the uh, um, city, but, uh, um, I, but it is that common uh, knowledge, so I will be staying for the debate and vote. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Councillor Martin. Um, yes, I move as uh, printed, Lord Mayor. And I look for a seconder. Councillor Mackey. Um, look, Lord Mayor, uh, let me make it clear that um, this uh, is not about um, Councillor Knoll. Um, in fact, it, it doesn't ask about names, it simply asks for numbers. Uh, and I would expect uh, that the anonymity of individuals uh, would be protected. But look, um, uh, I'm not going to pretend that this will be accepted. Um, I think that the members will reject this um, uh, on the basis that um, it's probably not important uh, to know um, if uh, um, elected members and uh, staff have, a, have arrangements in place. Um, if it were six, eight, ten, I don't think it's of any consequence. Um, and, and frankly, um, if it disclosed that there were um, uh, any kinds of uh, sales, for example, uh, whether they were competitive processes or off market or whatever, um, I think that would actually require us to do something. Um, so um, on the basis um, that I think it's unlikely to be accepted, uh, transparency measures are readily accepted by this uh, council. Um, um, I think I will withdraw it, but moreover, I am concerned that the administration says the cost of providing this transparency is $25,000. And I think that's a very substantial cost. In fact, I might save everybody some time and just withdraw it. Um, um, Lord, Lord Mayor, are you happy for me to withdraw it? So you are withdrawing it after having spoken to it. Is that what you're doing? Yeah, but the more I think about it, um, it's unlikely given the mood. Sorry, the I'm sorry. I'm just yeah, confused as to whether you were speaking to it or withdrawing it. So, um, I sorry, my, acting C. Lord Mayor, I put myself out of it. If the administration believes it's possible for me to withdraw it, I'm happy to withdraw it. Okay. With, I need to second it to you. <laughs> yes, you may withdraw. It is withdrawn. Thank you. So, sorry, Lord Mayor, I, just, I was wondering if I could ask a question through the view. Are you or the administration aware of whom or what that previous motion was pointed at? Because I was legitimately interested in... I, I am not, but we closed that motion, so I can't accept that question um, because the motion isn't being debated. Mm. So, uh, sorry, I can't, um, yes, we can't debate that one. Members, we have... One last motion on notice. Councillor Mackey, Big Santa. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I move as printed with a slight uh, variation and apologies. It was my hasty uh, drafting. In paragraph one, uh, it should be or fiberglass resurfacing, not refiberglass surfacing. A little bit of dyslexia there. Um, if I have a seconder, I'll speak to it. I'll look for a seconder, members. Councillor Martin. Councillor Mackey. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, it would seem that I've moved from the big Scotsman to the big Santa, but I haven't forgotten about the big Scotsman. He just happens to be in another jurisdiction. Um, Adelaide was home to the first ever big thing. As I just said, the big Scotsman. The big things movement is a symbol of exuberant place marking and commerce. Uh, uh, from the 1960s and 70s, and as a former long-time city retailer who loves Christmas in the city, I take pride 
in the traditions of Christmas in the city. Big Santa is an iconic reminder of those times and has been a part of South Australia's festive season celebrations for almost 60 years. Big Santa is as iconic a part of South Australia's festive season traditions as is the Christmas pageant, the brewery lights, the local full lights, and the more recent tradition of the giant Christmas tree in Victoria Square, Tartan Younger. The City of Adelaide encouraged Big Santa onto the Adelaide Central Market Authority about five, six years ago, about six years ago. And I commend the former Lord Mayor Martin Hazy, now CEO with Business SA and former ACMA Chair Nick McGarkas for having the heart to save Big Santa. He took, he looked great on the tower uh, at the Central uh, Federal Hall and Central Market, but just as the Central Market Authority is a wholly owned subsidiary uh, of the City Council, so too is Big Santa the responsibility of Council. Um, it's not a cost burden for us to shift onto the Central Market Authority trader, Central Market traders. Um, uh, he is an iconic part of our tradition of Christmas in the city. Council is being asked to spend uh, in another another report on another day, you know, almost or over a million dollars a year on its Christmas in the city campaign, decorations, giant Christmas tree banners, grant program for traders to dress their shop fronts in Christmas decorations, performers and things like carols by candlelight. Adelaide City Council's budget is more than just the rates on business, property and homeowners. As I mentioned earlier this evening, on another item. A gigantic percentage of our net income comes from car parking fees and this is the tax that city visitors pay to come to the city to shop, to play, to learn and to pray. Um, a recent news poll found that 80% of respondents want Big Santa saved. Um, Big Santa might be a little priority in the minds of some people, but sometimes it's the little big things that matter. I'm asking my fellow councillors to have a heart for the kids of SA and to prioritise saving Big Santa as part of our festive season spend. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak? Reserve my right, Lord Mayor. Councillor Hyde. I've only, got, I've only got a question at this stage, Lord Mayor, and that is, um, the 132,000, where where would that come from? Are we reducing um, other budgets or is that is it other Christmas budgets or is that being funded through Acting debt, CA? debt and deficit or? Where would we find that? Um, thank you through the presiding member. Um, when we had a workshop a couple of weeks ago, there's a couple of ways to fund that money. One is you can um, adjust your budget to pay for it, i.e. increase your expenditure for Christmas. Um, and so just to clarify, Councillor Mackey, I think um, our budget for Christmas was um, 650,000, not million. Um, the other option is, is that you stick with your 650,000 expenditure and perhaps prioritise actions within the uh, Christmas action plan um, to enable um, Big Santa to be squeezed in. Um, yep, yeah, so there's various ways for council to um, manage to fund this. Okay, all right. Um, and, and I suppose I'm a little bit confused because the motion talks about exploring options for its conservation um, or read fiberglass surfacing. But it, it appears that 5.1 in the comment, we already appear to have explored that and we've actually got, I mean, it's accurate down to the dollar. So does the administration, I know that the comment also says that um, uh, you're going to do a little bit further on it, but doesn't, doesn't isn't the exploration already satisfied? Is that? Uh, the, is the, sorry, acting C. So, sorry, it's, about so it's the, study, but the explore the options for the reef fiberglassing or the, the repairs is there. Isn't the feasibility study at five? Really, you know what it's going to cost. Yes, so I think what uh, that comment is saying is that to refurbish, so you remember some of the challenges we have about Big Santa is the quality of the structure. And so to repair that structure to enable it to be you know, showcased, um, we're saying there needs to be some painting, some fiberglass patching and a framework to enable it to be safely back um, on the central market wall. And, and when talking about the structure, Lord Mayor, is, is the structure, is it is it steel or is it iron, is it wood? Oh, I'm sorry, I don't know. I actually, um, Acting C, do you know? Uh, thank you, through the presiding member. I 
don't know, but Tom is nodding and is furiously, furiously. So, um, Mr. McCready, so Director McCready, if you could please um, answer that for the councillor. Through you, presiding member, it's a mixture. The, the predominance of the material is fiberglass, it's in three pieces, but it does have a metal surrounding frame, which is actually attached onto an engineered structure. And you've said Federal Hall is the engineered structure. Right, and, and if I could just understand, because we haven't seen a condition report or anything, Lord Mayor, um, uh, is it the case that there are holes in the fiberglass or is it just getting very thin at some point? Do we have a condition report acting C? Uh, also, how old to... is it? Sorry, Lord Mayor. And how old is it? Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Through the Prasadi member, um, my there is a condition report that has been um, developed um, originally, I think, to enable the central market to um, take the icon on. Um, in terms of how old is it is as a structure, I don't have the date to hand of when it was first fabricated. And just one final point: when we took care and control of it from David Jones, how much did we pay for it at the time? Eighteen C. Uh, thank you through the chair. I think the care and control was the central market authority at the time um, with the help and financial support from the city of Adelaide. Yep, but did, did how much did we pay for the actual right. capital? Through the presiding member we paid nothing. Nothing. Okay. Thank you. Would anybody else like to speak to it? So, Councillor Martin, you wanted to speak to it? Uh, yeah, look, Lord Mayor, um, uh, only to say um, that, look, you know, Santa doesn't uh, fuss me all that much. Um, uh, however, um, I do recognise uh, that this is a symbol of the City of Adelaide. Um, it was displayed for the years that my children grew up in Rundle Mall on the John Martin's uh, building. Um, it was something which came to mean Christmas in the city of Adelaide and it had enormous value to generations of South Australians and, and uh, 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 children over uh, generations as well. Um, I recognise that this is a very substantial sum of money um, that um, I am uh, concerned about the cost of reports. Um, there's no question about that. We need to be careful. However, at the same time, we need to be careful about uh, icons uh, such as this. And though it may be a substantial sum of money, it doesn't need to be expended in one year. Um, a little creativity of thought would allow us to perhaps do it over a number of years um, and then return it to its rightful place. Um, either uh, in uh, Grove Street or, frankly, I've got to tell you, I've always missed it uh, from uh, Rundle Mall or Rundle Street as it, as it was originally. Um, but look, you know, with, with a bit of thought, um, we could preserve this with a bit of um, uh, um, planning about how we go about it. But to not accept this proposal uh, means that um, uh, this Santa is dead, it's gone. Uh, a relic of South Australia will will tonight um, be discarded unless um, we make some attempt um, at preserving it for the sake of, for the sake of posterity and for the sake of those South Australians for whom it means a great deal. I think if um, just to that, Councillor Martin, in the administration comment, of course, the quote for repairs is 38,000. It's actually the cost of installation and storage, which is um, about 94,000, and that's that's on an annual basis. So, um, so the repair itself isn't doesn't seem to be that significant. Could could I just ask a question of the administration? I mean, is there any reason why it can't be stored on council premises? Um, I, I actually, uh, I'll ask the acting CE. Um, thank you, 
Uh, through the, through the chair it is rather large. Yes, but it's in three pieces. I know, and it's, um, we already store the Christmas tree, which does take up a large proportion of our depot site. Um, and obviously, if we could store it, we would, um, and rather than pay someone else to store it for us. So um, it would require, um, perhaps we could store it in a you know, car park, but then it would take up a fair amount of space within a car park and you'd lose commercial revenue on that as well, which would obviously impact the cost of storage. So my advice would be that the storage option that we have been doing is because there isn't any space. This is the cheapest way to do it. Okay. Councillor Hyde, I had you and then the Deputy Lord Mayor. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I've been listening to the arguments um, put by my colleagues very closely. What, what was missing out of all of those arguments is the actual history um, uh, of this. And, that is that this was a philanthropic uh, uh, venture of John Martin's, which was, of course, uh, Bill and Ursula Hayward, Hayward. Um, who were fantastic uh, philanthropists here in South Australia, um, as I understand it, or as I recall, um, without any um, heirs or heiresses, um, they gifted uh, most of their estate to the people of South Australia, and you can still go and have your wedding up there and actually look down on the city of Adelaide at Karakul. Um, they also, Bill and Ursula Hayward, um, in their time at John Martin's, also started the Christmas pageant as well, which is the Southern Hemisphere's largest uh, pageant. I think one of the largest Christmas pageants in the world. I'm fairly certain about that. So um, we cannot lose uh, sight of the history. The history is very important. The history um, uh, is one of philanthropy, and just as I don't want to see the central market traders um, uh, to be forced to pay for this, I also don't think it's right um, to then just spread it over some other traders in the city who are paying for it. I, I similarly um, am concerned when councillors big, big, bring big ticket items here um, without um, a proposal to pay for them. Now, if it said it would come out of this budget or that budget, or we should tinker with that and, and, and do what have you in order to pay for it, um, I'd be more accepting of that, but we can't just keep bringing expenditure items to this chamber. Um, uh, we cannot, unless we're also matching um, the items to reduce those expend that expenditure in some, in some other form, or to raise more revenue. Um, we cannot, we cannot be doing that. And of course, I get called a Grinch now, but um, uh, this is the same councillor who proposed that we kill the fireworks for you know 60,000 people and, and 100 or 200,000 others across the city. Right, so, sure. right. so when we want to talk about the festive season, um, I won't be lectured. I won't be lectured by some of my colleagues on that one. So with that, Lord Mayor, I'd like to propose um, an amendment, an acknowledgement of the serious history um, uh, of this and the fact that it does need to be preserved. Um, and throughout this process, I've been reminded. Um, that uh, some of the substantial custodians for the, the history of the people of South Australia is in fact the History Trust of South Australia. Um, and the amendment would be uh, that council seeks to gift. Big Santa. To the History Trust of South Australia. Oh. in acknowledgement of the, uh, of the substantial cultural significance. You just knocked him out of the room. You just knocked the mover out of the room. Of Big Santa to the people of South Australia. Comma. And the History Trust's role as the primary custodian of our cultural history. And remove two. Actually, remove three. <laughs> I seek a second level. So, Councillor Kerr. Okay. 
Councillor Hyde. I will go back to Councillor Mackey in a moment. Certainly. Oh, well, look, in, in summing up, Lord Mayor, I want to thank Councillor Mackey for his immense passion on this topic. I can see why he's the CEO of the History Trust of South Australia. Um, and a similar passion for the other 20 foot bearded fiberglass um, gentleman, which, which graces a, a building just outside the city of Adelaide. Um, ultimately, it comes down to roles. Um, uh, the City of Adelaide, look, had we been in better financial circumstances and had alternatives to funding arrangements been proposed, I might be um, keen to continue to continue this, but it's not just the $40,000 cost in refiberglassing. Um, it is in actual fact the $100,000 cost each year um, for the nine months of the year that Santa is not on display. Um, uh, and, and, and is essentially, look, he's, he's, as I understand it, over 60 years old, if I get my maths correct. Um, uh, Saint Nick ain't in good nick, um, that's for sure, after, after over six decades. Um, uh, it's at the point where I think an expert hand is required, um, uh, and that expert hand uh, is the History Trust of South Australia. They are the custodians um, of this. Um, I've gone through their annual reports, um, they seem to have increased their incomes quite substantially over the last few years, and I commend Councillor Mackey for that. Um, uh, in many ways, they're probably in better shape than us right now with a wafer thin surplus of just $30,000. So um, I'd like to think that as the custodians of our cultural history and our heritage in South Australia, they would be very interested in taking an active role, particularly in the preservation of that, um, uh, and that, uh, that a big Santa may find a home uh, with them that could still be used potentially it would be their will um, whether or not they wish to display a big center in the city or perhaps he could even do a tour around the state it is uh, it is a site that you don't get to see in Port Fury, Port Augusta, Mount Gambia um, uh, or elsewhere in South Australia so um, perhaps that might be a worthy venture uh, for St Nick as well maybe we could get a big fiberglass sleigh or two. Councillor Kerr, did you wish to speak and then I'll, I'll go to you Councillor I'll reserve Mackie. my right. Uh, okay. Thank you. Councillor Mackey. Lord Mayor, I'm sure my colleagues will realise that the effect of um, Councillor Hyde's disingenuous amendment is to render me requiring to leave the room and therefore not be able to participate in this debate. I have a conflict of interest by virtue of being, as he mentioned, the Chief Executive of the History Trust of South Australia. Members, does anyone else wish to speak to you? Yeah, I'll speak, Lord Mayor. I'll take my Councilor option. Um, look, uh, I, I support this amendment. Um, I think this is a, a very good way of recognising uh, Big Santa's history. I think it's been outlined very well by Councillor Hyde. Uh, but I think what this does is uh, this uh, both saves Big Santa, but this actually does give uh, to the History Trust the opportunity uh, to, to make of Big Santa a historical uh, uh, a display, uh, something that they can uh, uh, erect and uh, provide uh, history, background, all the sorts of things that it might be difficult for the council to do, uh, particularly given the uh, redevelopment that's taking place uh, in the central market uh, uh, precinct. So I think this is a very good uh, solution. This saves Big Santa. I'm sure the History Trust, given uh, the passion expressed uh, 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 expressively by uh, the uh, chief of the History Trust tonight, um, given the passion coming from the top, I'm sure that they will do their best by Big Santa. Uh, and I look forward to seeing what uh, what they make of this, uh, this icon. Members? Oh, I'll go back to Councillor Hyde to sum up. Summed up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against. That is, I can't even see what it is. That's carried. No, it's not. Okay, all right, sorry, I didn't see it. Thank <laughs> you. 
Mm. <laughs> Sorry? It's my vote. And that's why I'm having a laugh because as much as I would love to gift Big Santa, I think the History Trust might want to actually have something to say about whether they accept the gift or not. Like, if we seek to gift it, then I'm happy that we're seeking to gift and it's actually up to the History Trust to accept or not. In that case, I will actually vote in favour of the amendment. That now becomes a substantive. Um, okay. Would anybody else like to speak to the substantive that hasn't already spoken? If not, the move is not here to sum up, so it is summed up and I'll go to the vote. Those in favour, those against, and I'll vote in favour. Right. Members, I will ask Councillor Mackey to come back in and that takes us to motions without notice. Are there any motions without notice? If not, I declare the meeting closed. Thank you, members.